right, all right, all right. Good morning, y'all. What's a happening? We are live. It is Tuesday. It's the 25th of July already, and things are happening. All right, so as has become customary on a Tuesday morning, we get guests in here, mystery guests. Very exciting. Because as uh, Bakabantu and Ryan and Dari and Rina all know, all the rest of our crew know, I like a surprise. I'm not like, you know, there was this time where um, I worked for someone else in radio and they said to me in uncertain terms, I was a producer and I was a terrible producer, right? I was a producer for three people. I'll tell you who they are later. But the one presenter, and I'd only been doing it for like three months. And I, I admit that I wasn't very good at it. He said to me, I don't like surprises. Don't surprise me. I don't like surprises. I thought, that's so boring. I mean, the whole point of being on the air is that you, you got to deal with whatever happens, right? No, but isn't like being prepared also like, isn't that an argument for being prepared? Uh, yeah, I like, I like prep, especially when it's, um, you know, I have to read a book for a guest who's coming mm. in who's written a book or if it's, if it's somebody who's studied something very particular that we're trying to um, learn a lot of facts from, oh. um, or if it's somebody who's got a complicated biography with lots and lots of things that you want to cover, of course you have to do some preparation. It's also quite nice to have a guest come in sometimes and just get to know them. And get to know them. Okay, so like, okay, like I asked last week, who is the worst person? Like I asked who's the best person you'd like in the studio and you got it. I who's have the a feeling wor- like you're, what, who's the is worst this research? Person? Is this going into yeah, the research yeah, the, the, category? The, the, this is R&D. Yeah, this is R&D. Who's yeah. the worst person you could, you could get here? Uh, probably like a, 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 an up and coming actress or actor or a little sleigh queen or any of those kinds of people. As the knock on the door comes, yeah, bring, it in. bring in the guest. Bring the guest. It's a him or a her. Look at this, Darshay Birman van Heerden. You know, I'm really enjoying these uh, surprises. Nice to see you. Yes, Rian van Heerden, everybody. This is, uh, this is the man who gave me my, uh, my first job in radio. Gave you a big break. And I was on his show just the other day. By the way, I've got so many compliments. Listen, lots yeah. of people watch that uh, show of yours on CakeNet. What did you expect then? No, no, I knew, I knew it. But So I had my dad's birthday over the weekend. Huh. He's now old. He's 70. So all his friends come in and mm. a couple of his friends are obviously major fans of cake net and your show yeah so they like it already it's only what three episodes in huh we are now i think you were number four okay so tonight is actually number five very nice yeah okay. there we go exactly. i wish you told me that it was broadcast last week because i could have promoted it on <laughs> Did they not tell you? I'm no, so nobody. Sorry. T- you gotta fire some people. <laughs> you see, Gareth, you're so unprepared for the show. Is that you, you are like Charlie Theron? You I think know. only 47 people speak Afrikaans? No, there's no, there's a lot. There's, there's a, lot. a lot. I mean, a lot of people uh, watch Cake Man. Chief among them, I said to Rian, when, the only time I really see TV mm. is when I go and have supper at my folks because they always have the TV on in the background or whatever, and then they watch that other show of yours, uh, Vivor the Millionaire. <laughs> which is yeah, who wants sure. to be a minute yeah, yeah. no it's a great show i mean it's a really good show so here he is everybody yeah. rian van Heerden, south africa's one of south africa's very very best uh radio personalities he's done tv shows now a tv producer par excellence he's done it all yeah like the compliments keep it coming <laughs> no but it's nice to see you how are you i uh i actually filmed the episode of uh, this new series last night mm-hmm. so it, it's, it's, it's been a long night you're tired it's a right long long aunt yeah. i have to compliment you on these studios you Holy like it. heavens <laughs> i didn't want to leave the lounge <laughs> yes and let me tell you if, if that's how you feel if that's how you feel on a, a cold winter's day you can imagine what yeah. this place i'll show you when when we leave the studio later mm. you'll like what uh, it looks like a Colombian drug lord's house. I felt like I, I, I'm here for uh, for plastic surgery. Felt like okay. you felt like you were doing something illegal. <laughs> ah, absolutely, my smart work. No, it's I'm very impressed. cool. I like it. I like it very much. So this is a nice surprise. So far, you guys have absolutely hit the ball out of the park every time. We've had uh, amazing guests here as our surprise guests on a on a Tuesday, and I'm I'm really looking forward to this now. Yeah, yeah. and I appreciate Always you fun. coming all the way through. Thank you. Always so early. Fun. Yeah, the road's empty and sand, and for some reason, oh, shiny. Weird, huh? Have you noticed that? Isn't it, that the ice, though? Isn't like, it? Ice? Yeah. It, isn't it a bit scary, though, that uh, Santon is so quiet? Because I remember coming in here 
a few years ago to do shows when I was still 702 and it was busy at five in the morning. Yeah, it yeah, wasn't yeah. quiet. Yeah, yeah. So it just shows you there's something like the economy is really on a go slow at the moment. But, but, but the economy was shut down by the load shedding because remember like at some point McDonald's was 24 hours, but mm-hmm. now it's yeah. partly 24 hours. Probably yeah. ends at, at, at 11. Are there Shops any... don't close at 8 anymore. They close at 7. Are there a lot of 24-hour places in South Africa? I don't think there are. You know, I must just point out, you know, the, me coming to Santon is, is the exception to the rule. You know, I, I never come to, to Santon or Joburg for that matter. I, I don't you don't like the place? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so you it's you a real thing. You, you, but you've, you've yes. worked in the free state before. I, I refuse to leave Pretoria. Like, I, oh, I yeah. love to stay there and do all my things that I need to do there. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> my, my, here, my Pretoria as a better. A better. Just don't, don't if you're going to yeah. hurt yourself. You, he went to, you know, he grew up in Kradok. Yeah, I grew up in Kradok. Oh, Kradok. Uh, yeah, Kradok. Yeah. Which is nobody's uh, favorite. Place. Kradok, no one's favorite place in, in the Karoo. Oh, wow. Talk about Buravosh. I had Buravosh. I had Ruavosh. I had all the Vors. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but, oh, really? Uh, <laughs> no, no, not like that, Gareth. Not like that. <laughs> not like you gotta that. do what you got to do in Kradok. <laughs> to pay the bills. <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah no 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 pretoria is a better Joburg. like every time i've been there i've been astonished it's cleaner it's it works better oh, one second Joburg is a better pretoria how no pretoria is a better Joburg. yeah yeah no, that's true no i think I, I think to a certain degree it's better because the things here are more shiny like the roads but uh, but otherwise i think you know, you come here for like a, to to spend a little money. You yeah. feel like you feel like you need to at least, you know, <laughs> so if you've got some money, be but part in, of the economy. But in Pretoria, you don't need shiny roads. You guys, you guys all drive buckies. That's uh, so true. <laughs> come on, <laughs> listen, um, I, let's just give people a bit of a retrospective. The funniest thing that came out of my my discussion with Rian and his show the other day is somebody I, I sort of don't know this guy very well, but he obviously has my number. He, he writes to me, he goes. Is Rian Radach your beer man? Oh, yeah, more, yeah. So, See, beer yeah. man is a neighbor, yeah. right? So, oh, wow, thanks, Gareth. Well, I don't know. Thank, I mean, thank you for mansplaining uh, Afrikaans to me. All right. Well, we've got, we've got a show here with lots of people who, <laughs> uh, who might not understand the term. Anyway, Rian and I have called each other that for what? Since the beginning. Decades. You started that. Yeah. You started, so, you called me and a whole bunch of other people we were advised to with <laughs> beer man. But this guy actually thought you lived next door to me. <laughs> you, know where it, you know where it comes from, by no, the way, that term? Me. You tell me. So uh, many, many moons ago, and we used to go for these um, December holidays to Margate. Well, they to us on the campus bus, and we used to go there. But you have the student weekend in Margate. Yes, yeah. You know, it's before I met yeah. Gareth. So we went with a group of uh, the guys from Tux FM. The one guy was very conservative. And uh, I remember we booked into these bungalows, and the bungalow right next to us, the guys were drunk the whole time. They were partying. <laughs> I thought we were more conservative. And I, <laughs> I remember we walked out on the stoop, and he looked down, and the guy was passed out. One of these students was passed out in the driveway. And he looked over at him, and he said, Alweer drunk beer, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's not beer man for now. I love it. Um, so that was the first thing I needed to clear up from last week because people are confused. By the way, lots and lots of very kind compliments and very uh, big fans of yours here joining in on the fray this morning. So Hello. first of all, uh, Rebellious Ruth says, I love Rian's soft, soulful, soothing voice. Oh, well, you know, I did what used to advertise want? soap back that's, in the day. That's true, right? Um, yeah, Dove. And then uh, Mig says, he, Rian looks like an elite James Bond villain. That's not a, not bad look. What, what? Is that a what bad look? Me? Is that a bad look? I think that's quite a compliment. No, no, it's, it's the voice and the stature. Like he's giant. He looks like the last boss in the, <laughs> in the movie. He looks like that guy. Like oh, what are you oh, saying? Scary? Oh, yeah. I mean, like where, where like, do we go with this? Like, well done, Mister Bond. You finally oh. reached the final end. Uh, now it's time to meet your doom. I'm gonna sit up straight now. You know, I sit hunched over. <laughs> you look like a, look like Richard like a Richard the Third. Yeah. There we go. That looks better. <laughs> so, I mean, first of all, let's just um, just catch up everybody on where we did meet because I, this this kind of has become almost like one of those stories in my yeah. book and everything. But Rian gave me my first job in radio. I was at Varsity and um, to kill time between lectures, and there was a lot of time to kill between lectures because uh, I was studying law, which is not really 
a smart because you were banking a lot well no it's not a smart person's degree no once i started working in in, in campus radio, I started banking a lot. I mean, I probably went to three classes a week. Mm, that's right. true. But to meet the sub minimum. Yeah, but but you also studied law, and in fact, you I, even I you even practiced for a little bit. I did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pro career. There we go. And conveyancer. Thank that's you very right. much. Thank you. So, I mean, obviously, you decided, like I did, that law was witchcraft, and you must leave it in your past. Yeah, that, and I was always late for court. Which is never good. Yeah. You'll be held in contempt. I did like the tuacha, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, the, robe. the robes. Yeah. Very no, no, nice. that would have suited. Then you really looked like a Batman. Ooh, it? loved it. So, uh, Rihanna and I worked together then at Campus Radio for a, a little while. Um, you, were, you were the boss of all the, the on air presenters. Yeah. And you hired me along with three other guys, two of whom I'm still best, best friends with, mm. which I, I don't know if I've ever thanked you for that, but these are two of the best people I know. Yeah. And I'm in regular communication with them, even though they are both in America and Canada now. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I speak to them all the time. And they're, they're horrible people, but so am I. So we get along like a house on fire. And it really was, it was a very, very special time. And it, it got me interested in doing radio for fun. And look what happened. Can I, you know? can I just say one thing about this guy's talent? Um, he walked in there and he had a, what was it, the Philofax? What was it like those old diaries? You used to have those old diaries with like your, your diary, your uh, phone numbers, because yeah, you had to write this right. shit down before we had phones, right? So, with a ring binder. Yeah, yeah. So we sat yeah. there and we had these, these DJ uh, auditions. So in walks this kid, this blonde boy with his shorts. I think you know, plockies of its on hard. Probably. But, but of course. Yeah, of course. So he walks in and he says, um, I would like to be a DJ. And I said, well, what can you do? And he said, he can do voices. I said, well, you know, we don't have one of those. What kind of voices can you do? And he, he pulls out the diary, and there's a page there with voices he can do. I think it was like, like 17. No, it was a lot. I, for was, some, there was plenty. Because there were people like, there were TV stars at that time. That, <laughs> yeah. You know, that obviously, you, if you just listen to them carefully enough, you could get them down. I've been watching a lot of, um, there, there are two guys on, on Instagram who do the most incredible impersonations of particularly U.S. politicians. Mm. Like they'll do really good Donald Trump's, Barack Obama's, all those kinds of things. And I still marvel at people who can do that. I mean, I'm nowhere near as good as those guys. They make a living out of doing that stuff. But what I liked about, about him, so now you remember the, what was it? Foghorn, Leghorn? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll say, I'll say, I'll, I'll say. say I'll didn't anybody get the number of that there bus? <laughs> ah, takes me back. So I told him, I'm going to pick a few characters. And these guys are fighting about the last parachute on the plane. Now, you, you play all these characters. Let's see what you can do. And I picked these characters, and I said, go. And he, he nailed it. Remember that? I can't remember what I did. But we still, I'm, st I'm still making stuff up on the fly here every day. So <laughs> obviously, it worked. And then he did the, the Queen's Diary. Remember that? Oh, yeah. It was a, that was a feature we did at night. And it would be like getting into the personal diary of the, of the Queen. <laughs> Like, oh, I had a terrible fight with Philip this morning. <laughs> kind of shit. So I used to force them to tape everything. Remember the tapes? Yeah. He had to yeah. tape his show and then send it to me. Well, because I, I was also I was on at like midnight and yeah, you, yeah. you didn't want to stay up to listen no, to that. No way. And I had to listen to all of these shows. And I remember I played the tape to my dad and my mom in Durban. Hmm? And they said, oh, do you see any talent? <laughs> buy a boy. Buy a snarks. Snarks are good. <laughs> wow. Cake, buy a no. I mean... I do think that campus radio has always been a place where you could experiment and get into trouble and do crazy and exotic and wild things. And we did a lot of that. I mean, I was, I was definitely trying to get the most attention I could get. And, and it was good for ratings, but I, I don't think we even got decent like numbers at that time. I do know we did very well for a while. We were selling advertising. It was, it was a good, mm. for a campus radio station, we were doing well. And then they sank the ship. Remember, after you left. Um, <laughs> that sounds like a trend. <laughs> yeah. And I had to, remember, I had to come back then. And I mm, had to they, run the they, station. They begged you. That is for four years, four or five years. Yeah. Before they fired me from there. Funny, I've, I've also been fired from there. But it's the best thing about being fired from there, as I said on your show, is that once you have been fired, you're really not scared of it anymore. Yeah, after sure. that, you stop giving a shit. Uh, yeah, then, you, then you got fired and no. refired and refired again. Uh, but you know, I was escorted off campus. He wasn't. Uh, were you, were you, were you escorted were you, off campus? Yeah, by, by this security. is a story. Really? Why? By security. Can you believe it? What did you do? Yes. Ach, they, 
they accused me for of all sorts of things. Remember, it was cor- I was a corrupt. Uh, corrupt. You were corrupt. Yeah, <laughs> I was. I was the Zuma of the time. You know was... what? What, what, what ganja did you build in? in I was Radio? called Odds. <laughs> 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 odds you used to, so you own a restaurant too. This is yeah. just one of the things, and you know I I, I love this idea of a of a surprise guest because you never really know. But it's so it's so easy talking to Rian because we often you know we still talk to each other regularly. We try yeah. and go for a lunch every now and then. Yeah, yeah, should do it more. Though. He gave me such a pep talk last year because I was like, I'm tired of this radio thing. I don't want to do this anymore. Mm. Boring. Never say though. that. Boring. And I, I no, of course I shouldn't have said it, but I st- stupidly said it to you, and you dressed me down. You were like. Don't you talk like that. Yeah. You must do this. You must keep at it. We yeah. need you to say your say and all kinds of other things. Mm. I took you seriously. I took your advice. So well, that's why we're here. Well, I'm glad <laughs> we are. I'm, 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 once again, I'm really impressed with the setup here. That's nice. I don't know what I expected. but yeah, uh, Well, I mean, you're very welcome. And uh, I, I suppose we'll, we'll probably do one or two more of these. But you're now, at the moment, you're producing all these TV shows, mm. some of which have been tremendously successful. I mean... Real Heisfrau from Pretoria. Mm. Which Housewives. I know you didn't enjoy it from a producer point of view. <laughs> it's hard work. Hard work, right? Yeah, but know, a runaway success. Probably one of the most popular shows that has been created in South Africa for a South African audience okay. in the last five to ten years. Not, not the easiest show to do. No, because, I'm sure. Uh, number one, there's a, uh, there's a huge cultural difference yeah. when it comes to Afrikaans people. Um, versus the Americans or the you know the Canadians, you need to understand how conservative inherently Afrikaans people still are. Mm. I was actually talking to Mel for Lune last night, oh, yeah? and I said to her, um, "What I never understood when I started doing the show is, get, you can't brag about your money if you're Afrikaans, yeah, Give it, which is completely different to all the other cultures in South Africa. You know, it's it's, yeah. it's like a thing. Yeah, with big uh-huh. vice, you've got wealth. There's, but there's also that, and this is an interesting discussion. Sorry, Bakabantu, but like we can we could go into the psychology of this maybe on another day. But this whole nederigheid thing, yeah, yeah. this humility thing, which is so prized in Afrikaans culture, and frankly, in a lot of conservative black culture. I was going to say that because I was going to say like maybe because I grew up in like uh, Afrikaans town. And the black people, maybe we have the Afrikaans influence, especially the Eastern Cape with mm. the Afrikaans and whatnot. Mm. We also have that certain humility. You don't go around bragging that you mm. have many cows. Or if you do, first of all, there's this, there's the, interesting. the impulse. I mean, for the Afrikaners, I can ascribe it largely to Calvinism. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Calvinism is all about sin yeah. and guilt. And you must be humble and small and, mm. you know, shield your eyes from the Lord our God and that kind of yeah. thing. No, but, but it's an Afrikaans thing. And yeah, yeah. the minute someone isn't humble, it's the worst characteristic exactly. that, that you yeah. could possibly have. And if they, if they don't display humility, even if they've achieved nothing, mm. it's considered a valuable quality. Mm. Now, humility is not valuable if you've done nothing. Mm. It's, like, um, it's like me saying, well, I own this cu- coffee cup, but no one else wants this coffee cup. Mm. You know, it's not a valuable thing. And I think that there's this huge prestige that is attached to you know someone will say as a compliment oh you know um that uh that rian he's so he's so humble like it's a compliment yeah yeah yeah. and if you've done nothing that is a compliment Mm. if you're a moron but if you've done a lot of things and you're still humble sure then it's worth something and i often find like that's a thing with 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 a lot of conservative black culture and Afrikaans culture in this country, that they also want to pull you down if you get too big for your boots. Mm. Crabs no, in the bucket, be yeah. yeah, crabs in the bucket. That's right. what that's what we got at high, at school. You'd compliment someone Afrikaner, and they'd be like, "No, it's really nothing." Oh, but okay. it really it is down. something. Play it down. Yeah, you play it down all the time. That's what you were taught. And you I mean, this this reflects on your career because yeah. you've been through the the ringer with some of these people. Yeah, yeah. You know, some of them absolutely hate you, despite the fact that you've been delivering content that they love I, uh, for years. The, Beardman, as I said to you before, the day people stop hating you, you we need to get out of broadcasting. Because then you're not doing your job. <laughs> then you're not speaking your piece. <laughs> you know? Bakabantu so, takes notes. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I, a lot of things that people don't know about Rian, and he's, I mean, apart from the fact that he's hugely entertaining, he's very clever, he's, he's a sophisticated broadcaster and a, and a man who just like, gets to the point when it comes to understanding what people want. You really do, even if they don't know they want it. But apart from all of that, you have, you've worked in a number of radio stations. You helped to launch 
like the first Afrikaans station in the country mm. that was talk, mm. just talk. But yeah, that was a big deal at the time. Um, you lived for a while when you were working on OFM on a property where you had a giraffe as a pet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very true. No wonder they escorted you out of campus. You're running Pablo Escobar stuff. <laughs> you, know, you know what the amazing thing was? I, uh, Kate Bloemfontein. I was there two weeks, uh, two weekends ago. But the place has I'm changed. Sorry. You know? I'm sorry you were there. Yeah, it's How gone has it changed? Shit. It's, it's honestly been on it like Slag and Bloem were. Yeah, Mia. But when I was there, it was sort of still where it was supposed to be. You know, uh, in saying that, what I mean is, is Bloemfontein was one of the most liberal places mm-hmm. I've been to in my life. I, I, I didn't expect it at all. You wouldn't think so, right? Yeah, I didn't expect it at all. But people seem to really get along in Bloemfontein. Um, but when I was there, it, it's before the roads were uh, uh, potholed and, you know, the, the papers and, and dirt. Uh, they still had a semb- semblance of a municipality. Yeah, it was not yeah. right. Wow. But uh, I booked into this lodge because the radio station couldn't, they could only pay me so much. So I said, can you at least pay for accommodation? They said, okay, no, we'll, we can arrange that. <laughs> so so they, I booked- it. they went to Wim Yapi or whatever his name was. Can you simply for a camera here? Here for me, see. So I, I moved into this, uh, like a lodge, and they gave me a little bungalow to, to the side. And I remember, cake of us, bush coat and blue. Of, of course, of course. Man, it was either hot it or was. cold. There's a reason why they put a concentration camp there, because yeah. they really wanted to punish those, yeah. those people back in the day. This is minus fear, minus faith. But anyway, right. so I arrive there, and I look around, and I say, isn't that wonderful? There's a llama um, just outside my door. And I, I, next day, I said to the guy, I love this. So you stuff these animals and you put them around the place. I said, what, well, what did we stuff? I said, there was a llama. I said, no, it was just frozen. It's just very, <laughs> it's it's just very cold. It was thawing when the, out. When the sun comes up, he runs off. <laughs> my, so opposite my bungalow, there was a, a, a stick felt mm. and there was a giraffe there. And I thought, if I can tame this giraffe, wouldn't that be impressive? You walk through the streets of Bloom with it. <laughs> yeah. So I started calling to him. You know, hey, you know, I don't know. I don't know how you call a Did giraffe. Did you give it a name? Farney. <laughs> and um, eventually, I don't know how this happened, but the giraffe came over. Wow. And he stood right next Animal to the Animal whisperer. Fence. That's exactly. amazing. It's the voice, right? <laughs> and I just, I stroked the giraffe, the side of the thing, and give it the wow. honor be gefat. And then he... <laughs> He walked off again, and then I tried calling him Fani every time. You know, they were, guests would come, and he would come over. Vrachtag. That's pretty damn amazing. Impressive, I mean, uh, yeah, you've, you've you've done some interesting stuff, and by no means are you finished. So we we spoke briefly about the Real Housewives show, um, which was the only one in this country that's really taken off as well. The others have done mm, yeah. by comparison. Uh, I could say it; you don't have to. Durban, Durban did, did well. Did it do okay? Yeah, not as well as Pretoria. Yeah. But but at Twitter, I was more at more of a talkability around it. And yeah, you you also did you cast that yourself? Yeah. you chose the women in order because yeah. that was clever. But that was that, that was, was awesome. We look, um, you know, get to get back, back to my earlier point. Well, that is conservative Afrikaans. Mm, so to to tell them, listen, you need to be on a show and mm. not be shy and show mm. your money and show your wealth and speak your piece and and be honest. That was a story. Mm. So we started with two hundred women, you know. We spoke about this just the other day. People say they want honesty, but they really don't. They don't. No, no, they don't. People don't want, if you're just viewing it from the outside, you want honesty. But Mm. the people involved never want to be honest. And then we got to a point where, remember this scene in Joburg where one of the wives threw a glass to the other wife. (laughs) Yeah. And what I got at that point in time is everyone saying to me the same thing. You know, we don't really want to be associated with, with these housewives. That's not that's that's not, not a representation of Afrikaans yeah. culture. So I I had to get to a point where I said, listen, let's just let's just start the show. Let's just see where this journey takes us. Right. And and hopefully, um, as long as you're honest, that's all we want from a production point of view. And it it turned into what I didn't know, and I we got lucky that most of these women's beefs go back years. Ah, you see, that's clever. and I I think that worked very well for us. You know, they, they really didn't like one another. You know, you know? Um, there, there's so many other people here who've got questions about interesting things that you've done. And I mean, we can go through some of these. I think it's fascinating to me because you have, um, you have you, you're one of those people, a bit of a renaissance man. You know, you can do a lot of things well. And over, over the, 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 the few years that I've known you, 
it seems to me like you are always adding something new to the yeah. the list of things yeah, yeah. that you want to do. You, yeah. you know, now as a TV producer, and you, you're producing a bunch of shows, and you've still got lots of them in the bag mm. that have to be commissioned. And, and thank God, CakeNet's one of those channels. I want to give them credit. It actually is producing local content. And, and CakeNet has grown a lot because it went from one channel to like four now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no, it's, ter it's terrific. That channel is being run very, very well. Yeah. It has been for the last 15 or so years. And pushing the boundaries. Pushing the boundaries. And, and especially pushing the boundaries with Afrikaans people. Yeah. Because we've always been led to believe, no, 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 they won't like that. And the irony is that deep down inside, they probably like it more than almost anyone else. Mm. You know, especially our, younger people. Yeah, yeah. You know, our first show for CakeNet was Scalumpy, which mm. is an Afrikaans version of Cheetahs. Mm. Imagine that. Imagine that. And they you, said... You brought them on, and this is the funny thing, is you brought them onto the yeah. screen, they talked about these things, yeah. and, and you, you opened them up. Most yeah, people yeah. would be so, we're not like Americans in South Africa. Yeah. People don't like to talk about their, you know, the their lives. The small and, and, skeletons. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in American schools, they always say to the kids, you know, it's show and tell. Mm. So you come and you say, well, this is what I found in my mom's underwear drawer, and this is what it is, and you share it with the other kids. South African kids are not like that. They're taught to be seen and not, not heard. heard. You know? I, I always love this one production we did. And uh, we don't want to test, test if someone is conservative or not, if, if they're really liberal-minded. I asked him one question. Have you seen sex in Afrikaans? That was the, that was the most brilliant show. <laughs> no, no, if if say, another one of your brain children. Man, if they say, yes, I've, I've watched it, then I go, okay, now I can talk to you. Ma, as you know, he sex in Afrikaans. It's brilliant. Yeah, have you watched it? <laughs> is, are you more proud of that than... Birman, I look back at that show and I go to myself, I, uh, how is it possible that we got away with it? I don't know how you got away with it. First episode, I think, what, what first 10 minutes? Act as a war. I'm like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's the first episode. Yeah. This lady's like, act as a war. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. And with the, what, the, what the worms from the plus like. Yeah, yeah. What the worms like. Yeah. And you've got a restaurant, yeah. which, which we filmed the show in the other day and you filmed mm. another one in last night um and that's doing well too because i thought when i first heard that you had a restaurant i was like oh this this is just typical he's an eccentric weird guy and i mean i like that about you. you but you are you're eccentric and i, I imagine rian sitting down at another restaurant a bit like larry david and you didn't like the, maybe the fork wasn't clean <laughs> enough or you didn't like the way that's their it. pizzas were made and so he decided it's to make his own, yeah. which is kind of, I mean, that wouldn't be too far from the truth. But yeah. people love it, huh? They're coming in, uh, I, in their droves. I must tell you, uh, this, is, this is the thing now, especially since we've been doing the show. So you get a lot of people that, that want to see where the action happened. Mm. But um, not the easiest of, of businesses. Mm. And I, oh, man. Uh, yes, tough. But I also had to tell myself when I took over that there are 25 people that rely on that business. Yeah. 25 families so it doesn't matter what we need to push on through so to me it's not about the profit i can make there but it's 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 lovely to see i mean people get up every morning um and obviously you can only pay them that much you know for restaurant turnover but um they they do their best you know every single uh steak that they make or pizza that they make it's uh, they really take pride in it you know, and I love that. I love that about that industry. Manir, uh, where is this restaurant? What is this restaurant? What did they do? Thank you for asking. It's uh, it's called Elysioso. It's in Centurion, in uh, Dorenkloof Centurion. So it used very, to be... Very, very good pizzas. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Birman. Oh, you it gave used, me one to take home the other night. It used to be in a, an Italian guy called Tony, from pro proper from Italy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like think about some mafia deals of <laughs> shit was going down in that restaurant like 20 years ago. My old Tony is the old country. The, the Sicilian. Yeah, the red tablecloths, you know, the no, whites yeah. on top. It's a real thing. You can oh. almost hear the Godfather music yeah. playing. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Tony in the back. Yeah. So, so Tony brought the, the old country style to, to Centurion of all places. Yeah. We only had the water organ, the water oral of my story. <laughs> so Tony brought them these things called pizzas. And it was amazing for the men, so that the groot plat brood, ronde brood. And they were so impressed. And uh, Tony said to them, no, try it. You know, it's, it's called pizza. And the people really loved it. They really took it. It really took off. It's better as a pan brood. It's better as a water oral. So they started coming to Tony's restaurant. 
And uh, the guys that he taught then taught the next generation and so on and so forth. And then eventually he, he died. I don't know if it was a, a hit. Shame, oh, but man. anyway. Yeah, you, you never know with Italians. <laughs> you, you don't know. Look at this com- comment from somebody mm-hmm. here. They said, uh, sex in Afrikaans about the swingers in Afrikaans, Brian Nye. Holy shit, that was TV gold. That That's was. from Tracy. But you know what? Springer for Onavar, not Onavar, but mm. that Sex in Afrikaans show about the swingers, mm. it was more difficult to find someone in Afrikaans willing to talk about swinging mm. than someone willing to talk about the fact that they've got a uh, baby fetish where you dress like, mm. a, dress like a baby. Yeah. But, but here's another yeah. thing. Right? Yes, no. So when I, when I last saw Rian last year, um, I went through to his offices and met some of his team. And you've got a really good team of people that work with you too. You, and, and that's hard. You know, it's hard to find good people. Mm. Once you've kind of found them, you've got to look after them. Yeah. But he was telling me uh, about a show that they, they're planning, a, a nudist show. Yeah. Because there's a huge community. community of nudists. Yeah, this is stuck in my head because I don't know any nudists. Mm. But there are apparently thousands of these people. Yeah. There are different places all over the country. But like 20 of them, which are only for nudists. Or at least mostly for new yes. families live there. They, they, they their whole lives are. Uh, it's a lifestyle. It's not yeah. a. It's not a sex thing. It's yeah, a exactly. That's what thing, I was going right? to say. That's what I learned about nudist culture. It's that it's not a sex thing. It's this, no. the clothes make them feel uncomfortable, so they just want to be natural in, in nature. Yeah. yeah. Now no, I must say, um, got, I have a lot of respect for these people. Uh, naturism is the the, no. the nice term, right. um, but. <laughs> Imagine now, it doesn't matter what your body looks like. You take off your clothes and you're comfortable. Isn't that the ultimate, ultimate uh, comfort? Ultimate space self-confidence. To be? I think it you must know? be, but it's also, to me, like not everybody should be naked. <laughs> also, <laughs> uh, uh, of course, of, you don't want John Stendhal and walking around uh, naked. Yeah? No, I, I, there are a lot of people. I'd, I'd have a very long list of people I would not want to see naked. The short list Ugh. of people who I would want to see naked, we'd probably have more or less agreement yeah. on. You remember Bo Brummel? He sent me. He, a, was, the, he was the godfather yeah. of South African nudism. When he started Bo Valley back in the day, Bo and Valley. I know Bo Brummel, I knew him very well. And he he sent me a video, and he said, "Look at this is a marketing video for Bo Valley." <laughs> and um, I, I remember popping the videotape in and yeah. watching mense met groot pense in hangtete, ping pong spiel. In volleyball, and I looked at this and I said, oh, I can't. "Horrible! It's very off-putting." Oh, I, I really respect naturism, <laughs> but, I, but, but I, I can't. I can't, I can't look me, at this. Don't send me a tape like that again. <laughs> this burns my eyes. Yeah. It does it off. <laughs> well, anyway, they're happy. Let them do their thing. But you're going to do a show where you bring international nudists yeah. to South Africa and take them around to all the South African nudists, and then they'll swap stories and you know sit around the pool with no clothes on. Yeah, it's like a most now. Maras, what do um, they do during winter? Do they just hibernate? Uh let most hot pools. So nice and sore. Yeah, like they survive. They get through winter. <laughs> <laughs> Rian used to tell us stories in the um in the cafeteria on campus sometimes, or even just sitting around at the at the radio station there. He used to tell us stories. I remember laughing so hard one night at some of your stories, and you were just on a roll. I think we'd probably had a couple of tequilas. Oh, yeah. and there were about 10 of us there. But you could, he was holding everyone in the palm of his hand. And every, and we weren't high because I'd, I'd never done any like drugs at all in my life up to, you know, kind of way, 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 way later than that. And those were like the kinds of things that you could buy at the chemist. And I remember saying to, to Rian at one point, please stop. Because my, my stomach, stomach hurt. hurts. Mm. It was so bad. Grappies. So many good jokes. But also stories of things that you've done that seem to me implausible in South Africa. Like the, um, I'll never forget the chip and strip. That you oh, yeah, strip and, oh, well, you yeah, want to know about that, Bakabantu? Of this course is, I want to know about just this. Just listen to this quickly. Yeah, this is so. absolutely phenomenal. Um, so you know what? I used to stay in a commune when I was studying. And we just, I just started working as a candidate attorney. And obviously, salary wasn't good. So we barely got by. Yeah. And around the corner from us, there was a, a club, a nightclub. And on Tuesday nights, they used to have uh, strips and chips. <laughs> so um, you would pay five rand at the door. And you would go upstairs, and there would be Sunnyside's oldest stripper. <laughs> 
um, veteran stripper. <laughs> and um, she used to strip for the old apartheid ministers in the <laughs> 70s. You know, those Bosfeld brides that they used to have. Anyway, so um, she would Cocus. sit there. Yeah. Cocus. Yeah, and co- felt. Uh, yeah, Bosbarat. <laughs> so she would sit there with her. her you could smoke back then in the clubs. Yeah. She would sit there at the bar at the Lexington. I remember it was a Lexington. You'd sit there and smoke. Playing Nansaki next to her. And you would come in and they would serve chips. Um, they'd give you a small plate of chips. Yeah. And then... Uh, at some point in the evening, she would get up and do a strip show. Yeah. So strips and chips. But now on this particular evening, so I said, obviously it wasn't my thing, you know. Um, I thought I'll go, you know, for the experience. So she got up and they had these, you know, the sal stula. Yeah. You get in the sal. So are we sitting at the bar um, with my plate of chips? And this woman gets up, but uh, Keki took, take her a little, takes a little yeah, while. Okay. <laughs> Han van hier so, in Afrikaans aan. Ja, maar zij is ook te mos nou. Ja, ja, ja. go on. En zij staan op. En uh, hij gaan zo mix en match. So she walks, it was on the dance floor. They put one of the sales to on the dance floor. So she she takes a last puff on, this, on the cigarette. <laughs> And say, gooi een moer om neer op die grond. En say, trap om dood. You know those old stilettos? Yeah. The scuffed of front, and she she got on the uh, and she started moving. You know, I don't know what they were playing. <laughs> <laughs> Too unlimited or something. Like that. No, 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 no. She was doing a little thing there, and um, she took off her blouse. You know, many glitter up, took it off, and um, obviously the crowd wasn't really getting into it. So she thought she had to get on the soul stool. You know, but there was a fan on the roof, and um, which she didn't see. I don't know. I, I don't know if it was her first night there. So she stood up on the. On, she got up on the chair, and as she got up, the fan hit her on the fr- on the forehead, and she fell off the sales stool, and she was out. And the guy said, "Extra chips for everybody." <laughs> No, I mean, <laughs> it's true. It happens. <laughs> I've lived in Pretoria most of my life. I've never heard of strips, strips, and strips and chips. Strips and chips. <laughs> yeah. True story, Birman. I don't make these oh, things I up. I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> we'll talk to Rian about some of the trouble he's been in and some of the interesting stories he's got in a little while. It's, it's just such a pleasure to have you here. I'm, I'm so happy. Last week I had Fresh here. This week I've got you here. It's like a, it's a tour de force happening. Yeah. This is excellent stuff. But before we uh, get too stuck into that, um, Ryan, I think you must bring uh, Achi in. We've got to do a little, we do a bit of travel on a Tuesday, so mm. Travel Tuesday. Oh, lucky. And we, t- we have something called the window seat, hence the, uh, the window seats that you've got here around the studio. And um, Achi is the, is the guy from uh, TTS, which is Tourvest Travel Services, who has some interesting information to share with us. And uh, it's nice Why to have you here. Here? How's it, Achi? Grab a seat. Nice to see you. Um, yeah, very good. Achi Adams is the general manager for marketing at TTS. He's also a football lover and a Jedi master. Yeah, all of those things. <laughs> Jedi master, right? Absolutely. And um, he reckons that uh, that travel is the thing that we all need to pay more attention to and get right. So very nice to have you here, Achi. Let's just uh, let people know what you look like here. There we go. There's Achi. See, he's not he's not a real Jedi. He's not carrying his lightsaber with him. No, not yeah. today. No, he's got his lightsaber well. and his robes. And mind right. you, I, I should have brought it because I, I remember the last dress up, you were dressed as the Sith Lord. I was. <laughs> I, went to, I went to one of your parties like that. Yeah, that's right. You were dressed as the Emperor. <laughs> so what I want us to talk about here is that um, when you go traveling, and, and I don't know how much traveling you do, Rian, but you, you strike me as someone who doesn't like to do too much. Yeah. You like staying I, at home. You know, because um, the actual booking of the luggage, oh, the, the flight, the the um, going through customs, mm-hmm. it's it's an issue for me. I hate it. That's I'm, a drama. I must be honest. I absolutely hate it. Archie. Hate so, traveling. So when I go traveling, one of the the most one of my favorite things to do is to buy people presents, and then I come back and yeah. give them to the family or you know friends, and they oh like this is a nice present. But some people collect things, so they go overseas and they get the fridge magnets mm. or they get the whatever it is that they get. Do you mm. have anything like that that you do? Do you collect anything? 
I, um, I actually do. Um, when I, uh, I've, I've been to a few places in my life, but I, I collect weird stuff, you know, like little rocks from Alcatraz and, oh, yeah. you know, oh, stuff like that. That's cool. Um, the weird voodoo dolls from Mexican um, uh, cartels. So, yeah. <laughs> do you have one of things. those shrunken heads from one of these Caribbean islands? <laughs> <laughs> the one. I, I don't know if I can say. No, go on. <laughs> go on. Sure not to have a the skull human remains yeah. that I have at my house. <laughs> not at liberty to discuss that. All right, but Aki, you collect stuff, right? Because you do a huge amount of traveling. I mean, Aki, for example, because I've known him for a little while now, he keeps a bag in his boot always ready to go. Yeah, it's called a gold bag. And you've got you got your, what? You've got a couple of changes of clothes. You've got toiletries in there, and you've got what passport? All of that shit, all just that ready stuff. to go. Ready to go. Right. Uh, you know, at the office they call me. Uh, I'm the B team. Oh, yeah. So if the A team's traveling, if something happens, <laughs> <laughs> I get the last Perfect. minute call. You still get invited. I, I think last month I got a call at about uh, half past eleven in the morning. Mm. I had to be at the airport at three o'clock to get on a flight to Turkey. Yeah. Just so, like that. Just oh, like that. Oh, so this is not a doomsday prepping thing. This is uh, no, no, your on call all the time. He, he's very organized. Um, <laughs> you so got to have that go bag. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So while we're talking about travel, um, I, I think it's probably useful for you, you to share this travel thing with us. Because some people do collect these things. They take selfies at famous places. I mean, I saw the funniest thing this weekend. Um, friends of mine who are now parents, they sent a picture before you have children of the two of them at the Eiffel Tower. It's this beautiful Eiffel Tower picture in the background, and they look so romantic and in love with each other. And then after you have children, and they've got a picture of the same couple standing in front of an ESCOM pylon. <laughs> it says, this is what you got to look forward to. But uh, you travel first class, I guess, for business. Uh, you'd think so. No, unfortunately, we do travel the cheapest way possible. So Coach. it would be economy class. We oh. do have friends, uh, obviously, with the airlines. Where possible, mm. yeah, we it do might try have. to get an upgrade. He's got a better chance of it than we do. The, the sad thing is, once you've traveled business class, it's so hard. Oh, my God, yeah. You know, getting in that plane, you look to your left, it's business okay. class. Yes, you look sir. to your right, especially when you're traveling now personally with the family. And you got to go there and you just look to the left, oh, if only. Mm. And I always yeah. say, I probably could get a, an upgrade, but just for myself, not the entire family. <laughs> mm. And that would be the fastest divorce ever. I mean, just oh, yeah, uh, I'd land, I'd be divorced. If you I see, everyone has to <laughs> sacrifice. I find when, when I, I traveled first class only once in my life, but I find it does turn you into a Roman. You know those Romans that yeah. spit on the pool. Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah you, know, you do. At some point, you do get up and you you look uh, you know around the curtain, past the curtain, and you look at these poor sleeping yeah. bastards <laughs> in the exactly. back. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the Check best that. part of being in in first or business class is yeah. going to the back and looking through the curtain. Oh, seat, love it. Seeing these people squeezed into their seats, uncomfortable as hell, <laughs> neck problems are on the way. Mm. They got to hit the road as soon as they land, and they're tired and exhausted child screaming next to them that they don't even know it's horrible i still horrible. get him though at the at the customs queue though oh yes oh, yeah uh, all right so so what do you you do a thing when you go to these uh, famous cities and these famous places you go to a street that yeah that uh, is well renowned and each city has a street right we were talking to tracy and carol just the other day about the what's the road in in Phuket, Bangla Road. Bangla Road. That's, that's right. a famous road in in Phuket. So that's where they have all the all the ping pong shows and yeah. all of that stuff. Mm. <laughs> yeah, Bang, Bangla. Oh, exactly. uh, if, you, if you watch on YouTube, you see any videos yeah. uh, of Bangla Road because you mm. can, and you see the people walking past the camera, you'll see the people that are there for the first time. Their eyes are wide open, and that's how you spot them. It's their first time at Bangla Road. Mm. Everything is just so shockingly in your face. Hmm. Bang, so, bang, la. bang la bang la well that's about right it's bang like, la it's like bang bangkok so, you know, <laughs> write that down right. bang okay la. so so where what are the other famous streets around the world because i'm not exactly well versed in this stuff so i mean like new york for example there's so many streets in well, new york fifth avenue or fifth avenue for the shopping Broadway or whatever yeah. broadway uh wall street <clears throat> i mean there's a movie of course wall street, yeah so. It's amazing how boring Wall Street is. Um, so you could really mm. kill three famous streets at least in New York without Absolutely. even trying. Uh, like London, for example. Uh, I'm a big fan of Sherlock Holmes. So I went and sought out 221B Baker Street. Baker Street, mm. yeah. Uh, to go and find that. So yeah, I, I look for all of these these streets. Um, in Turkey, I mean, you've been there as well. In, in Istanbul, Istiklal. Yes, you see that's a million where people shopping, walking shopping, shopping. Through. 
It's crazy. So I, I I look out if I'm going to a new city, I'll try and find out what's you know what's the famous street or stuff like that, and and that's what I look out for. I love it. It's lovely. It is, and it's a nice Wonderful. nice business to be in. I mean, you've been. So where did your career start in travel? <laughs> well, my generation, uh, we I think pretty much everybody started at. SA. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So, what were you serving drinks on board? No, for a little Hi. while, believe it or not. Chicken and beef. <laughs> were, you, Did were, you you doing, were you doing the, Did you do the exits? Yeah. The exits. So, we, we were actually I mean, back in those days at SA when you did induction, you know, yeah. brought you into the airline. By the way, I have to show you something. Uh, Rian can read this because he's better at this than I am. The white this, thing. No, no, no. This, yeah, yeah, the white thing. Have you seen that, that, that uh, letter that someone was yeah. sent? Yeah. Just have a look at this. Oh, sorry. Uh, Listen to this. This is the Rian will do this in the in the voice of a <laughs> yeah. of a SRL um Mejuffrou, ambtenaar. Mejuffrou M. E. de Jager Luchwarden. It's not written to a Jan Smits Lachala. <laughs> that's case. how long ago it is, right? Yeah, that's where you'll find it. Dear die kajuit dienste bestuurder Jan Smits Lachala angestuur. Just where it's coming from. Geachte mejuffrouw, hij is op 27 juli 1972 geweeg. They weighed, they weighed her. They weighed her like a, like a champion bull. Bij welke geleentheid hij 61.20 kilogram geweeg het. Wat 1.10 kilogram oor die toelaatbare maximum in hij geval 1.10 kilograms too heavy was yeah. this poor woman. So now uh, it goes on by saying, I was this to 25 August 1972 time begun to make the case right to stel so that I can be able to do the same thing. This is the that I have to two weeks to be able to make sure that I have to make sure that I have to make sure So she had to come in every two weeks to be weighed. Can you believe this? That's what they, they used to have very strict standards. Very, very right? strict. Well, well, we should go back to that. You think so? Yeah, I think we should go back to this. What's this thing about extended seats and whatnot? You should buy two seats if you have if you need an extended seat belt. <laughs> if you had a boop, yeah, <laughs> yeah. buy an extended seat. All right, but, but back to Achi. So you started there. You started there. And induction was hectic. It was like three months uh, at the time. So even what though you were hired involve? to work in reservations, you actually got trained to work on certain aircraft. You got trained okay. to work at check-in and that kind of stuff. Right. So if ever they needed you, they could second you to a different division mm. or department. And at one time when the cabin crew on strike, all the ground crew were asked to go and fly. Hmm. So yes, we did do the chicken and beef and wow. stuff okay. like that. So you really know the inside out of the, of the travel business. Yeah. All right. So we'll get you back in a future episode to give us some of those hacks. Yeah, because I think that's the most useful thing. There's a list of things that people who travel a lot know uh, about airports, about planes, about ground transport, about accommodation that the rest of us just don't know because we haven't had the most experience yeah. that they have. And and it's amazing to me that you can do that. But there's something else I wanted to talk to you about this morning, and that is the, the you only mentioned this to me in passing the other day when I saw you, but the TTS Education Program. Yes. Now this is not some charity where you're helping schools. No. This is about companies that want to send their staff on a trip where they're going to learn something. They're Correct. going to participate in something which is educational. Am, am I more or less right about that? Yeah, uh, I think yeah, that's it's pretty much it. It's, it's, it's a program that uh, we've relaunched uh, uh, like about a month back. Uh, before COVID, we started this program, I think it was 2017. Uh, and for those three years before COVID, uh, we managed to take 100 or just over about 115 of our staff Hmm. to a variety of places around the world. Where would you go for an educational trip? Well, typically, I mean, we look at our current client base and our corporate clients, uh, the most frequented cities that they go to overseas, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's London or Germany or, or New York, for example. And we take the staff there so they could get that firsthand insider experience of what it's like for their traveler. Mm. Um, you know, the, the, the service industry that we're in you need to be able to provide that superior service in what better way than being able to tell because, that kind of thing. Because let's face it too, a lot of these people are working in an office most of the time. They're not the ones who get to go on holiday. Correct. So when the customer is complaining about something and they have no idea what no they're idea. talking about, it makes it much harder to keep them as a customer. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a good example is, you know, and you always look after your high paying customers, obviously as well. Sure. A customer flying on, on, on Virgin Atlantic, you know, uh, a, via London to New York, for example, mm. we had a customer phoning and asking, where do I go for the you know, business class lounge? And the consultant knew exactly where it was. Mm. Oh, Could direct him on the phone uh, via WhatsApp, turn left, go up this escalator, or whatever it might be. 
And, you know, for for that customer, that service was unrivaled and, you know, it, it built that stickiness and, and loyalty as well. I think that's amazing. So you, you offer this to people with in-house, obviously, but you would do it for clients as well. Yeah, I mean, if there's an opportunity, uh, you know, the program is a collaboration between us and our suppliers. Um, so we, we negotiate this with our suppliers. When we take uh, people on these educational, it's never mm. just one person. It's a group of people, sometimes a small group of just six, sometimes a big group of, you know, I think uh, 18 people on one trip. Um, mm. And we, we work with the airline, we work with the hotel suppliers uh, to take people on these trips. So yes, uh, you know, key uh, suppliers would be able to to join us on that. Well, as Rian's well. thinking of bringing a bunch of nudists out here for a TV show he's filming. Maybe, <laughs> mm. maybe you should talk to him after because like. that's an educational trip, I think. Don't you? Absolutely. No, I think it's a very a very educational. <laughs> talk to your supplier. Bring on a plane full of nudists. <laughs> <laughs> so Achi, tell us what's the best trip you've been on because you've travelled all over the world. Give well, us uh, something to be jealous of. My, well, from an educational perspective, was definitely New York. Mm. Um, I mean, from entering the country for the first time. And almost getting turned away because of my name. Yeah, because of your color of your skin. Also. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you, you got to know. I mean, my name is Achi, right? It's my yeah. professional name. It, it's, mm. it's Aramaic for brother. But my passport name is Ahmed. Oh, <laughs> that oh, opens yeah. up Mus- a can of worms. Muslim. Uh, and and my, <laughs> my surname is Adam. They pat you down really carefully. No, no, no. Right? no they strip her. They strip no. them naked in that yeah. back room there. Not that bad. <laughs> almost. Um, uh, Mone will tell you as well. He was with me on the trip. And the customs official. Um, tells me that I have a fraudulent passport. What? And I'm like, what do you mean? I mean, I've got my visa in there, everything. He says, they messed up your passport because you've got a first name as a last name and a last name as a first name. Because in America, Ahmed yeah. is a last name and right. Adam is a first name. And we're having this back and forth and eventually uh, the easiest way out was an African-American gentleman. And I said, do you know why it's like that? Because of apartheid. Oh, oh suddenly. So, and, and he's yeah. like, Oh man, apartheid! I remember that should Mandela. be effed up, man. You can go <laughs> boom, boom, boom. You step past it. No, no, so through. you see, it helps. There's a way we can make apartheid work for people uh, yeah, after it, all. It helped. Uh, but they, uh, also, they also pulled me out of the queue. Really? Uh, really? Huh? Do you look? You do? I, you, but I he does look like, look like a, a bond villain. <laughs> so what did they? So what did they? What, did what? they tell you what they were looking for? No. Just, guy came up to me, and, and, and this he done. Then you think, you see, I, I, th- I thought I knew how these things worked. You know, yeah. but but you don't. They yeah. do things differently. The guy pulled me out and said, "Sir, can you just come with me, please?" I said, well, "Why?" <laughs> oh, just sir, just step, just step please away don't from ask the. Any questions well, well, so so don't drop, they were drop really the polite. Yeah. Yeah. He walked straight to me and he said, "You, you sir, come with me." Oh. And they put you in this box thing. I don't know if this happened to you before. And it's yeah. weird winds blowing with streams of air from different sections, <laughs> just in this box thing. And, uh, wow. You feel like you, you, what know, do you, you come from the jungle. Th- but what do you think that is? is I that don't know. A- I, I think it's just the randomness of it. Well, what is it? That seems no very idea. Odd. That seems no idea. very Had odd. a lovely blow wave. <laughs> <laughs> walked, out, walked out of there. Weird. All right, anyway. well, w- w- tell me where we wouldn't want to go. Because like, you've probably been to some countries that you thought, hmm. I don't need to go there again. No, I've never had that. Really? Never had you that. Always, you're one of those explorers. Yeah, I mean, I'll find the Something good in everything. Okay. So, um, right. And, you know, just back on New York, why it was memorable. I mean, it was my first trip. And you've seen it in the movies. You've seen yeah. it on TV. It looks uh, just like it does in the movies. Exactly. Yeah. And we were staying at the Marriott Marquis on oh. Times Square. We landed at about 1 a.m. in the morning. And we got there, obviously, wide awake, jet lag and all of that. Uh, left the bag. Again, at every hotel we stayed at. They didn't. They couldn't find my name because it was the other way around. Right, yeah. So I, everywhere I went, I started introducing myself as Adam. <laughs> so when I meet an American, I'm, no, no, my name's Adam. It's, it's just easier. easier. Yeah. Why do Why do that to yourself? And at one o'clock, we went to. I said, nah, "I gotta go to Times Square. We're right here. I gotta go to Times Square. Yeah. I gotta go get a hot dog <laughs> in Times Square." And uh, it had just rained for about three hours. Lashed down. We didn't know that we were in the air. And I got to Times Square, oh and, and I'll send you the photo. I mean, it was. Empty, horrible. It was eerie, and that place is never empty. Never yeah. empty. I mean, it's been empty once morning. for that Tom Cruise movie, and once during COVID. That's yeah, once during COVID, because yeah. there was that eerie picture during COVID where Times Square was just shut down. Uh, we counted one police car, one Russian with a suitcase asking for directions, uh, and suitcase. one hot dog stand that was open. Mm. So, what's uh, your favorite place to go, Bitman? Where do you like I, traveling? If I, you if you do, I I want to ask you, Achir, you've been to Mexico? Nope. 
I haven't Oy. been to. I, I mean, I've, I've said I've, I've been to only 17 countries, okay. unlike my colleagues that have been to like 50. So Mexico okay, is definitely just, on the list. Can I suggest for you? Yes. You'll go to Mexico. <laughs> yes, man. Nice. I was on a tequila crawl <laughs> in Mexico. <laughs> I, I, I actually went to a bar and I said, listen, I'm in, I'm in Mexico. Give, make me a list of the top five tequilas yeah. in Mexico. And the guy made a top 10. So sorry. Yeah. Right. And he said, here's the 10 you have to try before you leave. So I started on the list number 10. Eventually, I, I ran into someone from uh, some Polish journalist and then when I got to number three, I was, I, I was talking Afrikaans to these Mexicans because they, they only speak Spanish. Spanish. And we understood one another. <laughs> but tequila. Tequila is magic. So at it's some really point, the best translator. At some point, the guy goes to me. This is now two or three in the morning. The, the owner of the tavern, whatever you want to call it, he said to me, yes, sir, can you come outside quickly? I want to show you something. And I said, yeah, what do you want to show me? He said, oh, just, just come with me, sir. And we walked out, and I just heard the door slam behind me. <laughs> Uh-oh. And I was on the streets in Mexico. It's Mexico City? In and Mexico on your City. Own, you, you're, you're just taking your chances. Yeah, yeah. So, hey. so now I'm trying to find the hotel. Um, and I'm here with that because I'm poop drunk. So, yeah. And was this <laughs> so, before we had GPS on our phone? Yes, or before. Oh, wow. So, anyway. Okay. Okay. I'm of the inclination. So on my way, I see a, a lovely young Mexican gentleman uh -huh. standing next to a, to a wall. But uh, they, by the way, they, everyone's beautiful in Mexico City. I don't know why. It's not what I expected. I expected the guy on the beacon bites back. Yeah, or cheap with the dong, yeah. With the donkey. Yeah, like... <laughs> it's not what they look like. But anyway, so, uh, so this guy, and he's got, he's got the shirt unbuttoned a bit, standing, okay. you know, next to the white shirt. Right. Lovely. So I say, um, is it your shot? You want you want a shot? Shooter? Tequila? He goes, oh, tequila, yeah. So I say, okay, come with me. Follow. Follow me. So anyway, so we stumble. Eventually, I get to the hotel. Now, they, they think the whole time that you're going to be kidnapped. They have, but it's you Mexico. Have, there are these stories about the yeah. cartels. Yeah. And, yeah. So, so when you arrive, apparently that is just part of the course. But when you, when you arrive with some stranger at the hotel, they take all the guys, all girls, um, you know, identity documents, wallets, just in case they kill you, you know, or, or oh, kidnap you. Because that <laughs> does happen, right? Anyway, so we go up to the room. They take all his stuff, by the way. They take his wallet. Everything. So we go up to the room. One thing leads to another. And... In the early hours of the morning, I wake up, and he says, mm. he says to me, "Es la vuelta a Cartagena." I'm like, "What the? Es la es la vuelta?" Like, luckily, I've got my 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 book, you know, the Spanish. Oh, so you English. were translating <laughs> at, on the on the spur of the moment. All right, so, go. So I decide I I I must have picked up a prostitute. <laughs> oh shit. Um, so oh, I, I find my phrase book. So I, I guess he's, he probably wants money. So I go through my phrase book and I get um, how much. I can't remember now what's it, what it's in Spanish. In French, it would be combien. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, but right. he, he said, I say something like, esto cambienas. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at me and he bursts out laughing. <laughs> he bursts out laughing, this Mexican guy. He says, no, no, no. Aquí, door. <laughs> Oh my god. And you just called him a prostitute. Nice. Good times in Mexico. Nice. Well, that sounded like a good time. I was. Jeez. You know, but you, you can only some things you can only do when you're overseas. You can only do certain things. Like I mean like that, prostitutes. At Bungla Road you were talking about. That's not the kind of thing. If we had a what is Joburg Street? Right, Bree? You're not free. No. That's, that's a disaster. Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> too soon. What what, uh, what do you think Joburg Street is? It's got to be where Summit is, right? Like, you know, they're in Hillbrow, right? Or like, this is like, yeah. it's it's dirty, it's grimy. It's yeah, probably, probably about right. Yeah. yeah. It would it would have been that. Uh, maybe maybe now it would be different. Yeah. Maybe now it would be you, somewhere You see now, outside. Gareth, I'd like to point out a point, like a learning opportunity here for you. Okay. You went to Mexico <laughs> and you went and visited all these historical facts. Yeah. These are the stories we wanted from Mexico. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, next time I'll go with Rian and then we'll have funny stories. Good. Yeah, we'll have very. You are you um are you missing the morning show? 
waking up so early this morning? Did it remind you of those days where you'd have to wake up and do early morning radio? You know, this is the time that I'm awake, Gareth. So, you know, so I'm at the office at uh, 5.45 every morning. But you told me why you do that. Very important. You know, what is that, the 4 o'clock club or the 5 o'clock club? Five, what mm -hmm. is it? 5, five a.m. Club. club. I'm at my most awake. I'm at my most alert. I'm at my most productive. You know, the world is still waking the same, up. Achi. Same. Yeah. Yeah, See, these are smart people. That should be the system. That should be the way you live your life. You have to be one step ahead of the crowd. Well, we are running off after 7 o'clock now, so we've got to take a quick break. But, um, Achi, great to have you on the show, and we will obviously have you back again soon. We've got to get those hacks. Yeah, you, looking forward to it. What you, what you can do. I discovered a hack the other day. <laughs> so you guys gave me one of those Apple tags that I put in my luggage. Mm. Now, you can find your luggage anywhere. Well, first of all, what is the most scary thing for some people? Oh, no, they've left my luggage in Joburg. So as soon as I landed at the airport in this last trip, I go onto my phone, I go to devices, I look for my luggage, and it tells me it's on the conveyor belt. It says, it's very near. Wow. It goes eight yeah. meters, seven mm. meters, what? six meters, five meters, four, and then eventually your bag is right in front of you. Pull it off. You don't need to stand there and what? run up and down the luggage thing. Plus, Incredible. if it was in Joburg, it would show up in Joburg. So yeah, you can actually say before, you know, normally you'd have to wait for an extra half hour just in case your bag is the last one. Now... You can actually just see where it is cool. anywhere. You can see so, it going off the plane onto the tremendous. Incredible. Track. Yeah. There's a small little thing like there's that. A little, there's a hack for you. That is a hack. Uh, we right. get it That's from why I also have a Samsung well, It's an Apple. Oh, so you can okay. buy it from the iStore. You can, you can also get one from a Samsung. Come on, guys. Don't push Apple. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's all, right. uh, that's all we got time for in this hour. We'll be back in a moment or two. Achi, thank you very much. That is Thanks, the window Gareth. seat. And you can find out more about all the travel opportunities that await you. And you don't have to. Um, you don't have to think that this is something that you'll spend the next eight months eating crackers in order to afford. There are all kinds of options on travel.co.za. Go and check it out. Travel.co.za.
All right, all right, all right. It is uh, Tuesday morning. We are almost at the end of July, and we have our special guest this morning in the studio, none other than the brilliant Rian van Eerden. So good to see you. It really is. Beard, man. This is this is what makes um, these Tuesday surprise guests fun, and I get to spend time with people I actually like. <laughs> Oh, that's lovely. At right, Bunker the... Bunsen, not like you. I, mean, I have to spend time with you. I like you. You're forced to spend time with me. You don't have a choice. <laughs> that's probably true. At least they bring you people you like. Imagine. Yeah. Imagine if they brought me people I really didn't like. It can be much worse. I don't know. It could be a very funny show. Mm. No, no, I, mean, no, I, I, I kind of kicked someone off the show on Friday, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Yeah. Yeah, you 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 were, you kind of you were kind of. I think you did uh, kick someone off. I kicked off him off the show. The show yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's bygones. I mean, it doesn't matter because it wasn't interesting. It yeah, wasn't entertaining. Yeah. But at the same time, wh whose name is on the door? <laughs> well, well, yeah. Yeah, I whose mean, show is it? <laughs> it's a funny thing, though, and Rian will probably back me up on this. I mean, it's almost as if as you get older, you there are certain people whose egos become more of a problem. But I think if you've been in, yeah, yeah. in media, it, it's something you let go straight away because there are a lot of people, and this is what we discussed in your show as well, who will never like you. So eventually you just stop worrying about it. I had a, a, a very interesting discussion with, um, I'm, you know, I'm actually telling you now all about these shows coming up. Mm, but, that's fine. Um, it's promotion. Ma, uh, Dozy. I mean, you know, the famous Dozy. Great uh, singer. Yeah. Well known um, guy. So Dozy said that you, you get to a certain age where you, you stop caring. Yeah. You know, and it's nice to get to that point in, in life. No, no. Minier, can you tell that to Steve Hoffmeyer? <laughs> he should stop yes. caring that people hate him. Well, yeah, doesn't yeah. He, he hates you, doesn't he? Yes, he had to bring up that name now. <laughs> he, but he hates <laughs> you. I mean, he really doesn't like you. I don't think he has a lot of time for, for, for very many people except himself. I had a, I had a fight with, uh, with Hofmeier um, last year. Uh, got ugly. And um, I remember after, uh, at, at some point, now obviously he's got a certain um, fan base. <laughs> but, so... Um, I'm I, I I'm off to buy a a, a combi and I'm uh, and I decide all right where am I going to buy it uh, okay I find a place in Pretoria North that's okay let, let me go there although Pretoria North is Pretoria North yes. so um still about yeah, 80, you know, 80, 85, 86 is about their, their yeah. the height of their evolution yeah there's an accompany berg so it's conservative you know. so anyway so I, I get out of my car and I'm on my way to walk to the second car dealer uh, and I just hear Do us. <laughs> what was that what, what did I just hear um, and I, I continue I, I, crossing the road and I hear Do us. and it's people driving past oh they hate you just screaming out their window <laughs> are these me. Steve fans yeah yeah okay. yeah yeah so, uh, ach, what, let, let him let him do his thing. Is in his old age, he makes him feel special. Now, you yeah. you had a plan last year to start doing a podcast. Has this TV show of yours taken that idea to the screen straight away? Because you can kill two birds with one stone. I sit there and interview people, and you can have really cool conversations, which is the feeling I it, get for yeah. for lot on. Uh, the one, there's something about this this microphone. And sitting in the studio with you guys, I don't think it's a feeling that you can um, you can copy on television. Mm. It's just not possible. So so no, I don't think it it uh, replaced that idea. I'll probably still do it at some point in time and do my own little thing. See if people will listen. No, to your point, Minier, Gareth and Fresh also had this talk about like last week when Gareth said, I did TV and, and Fresh also said, I did TV, but there's something that he just loves about the microphone. Yeah. There's something when you're doing what you love and you're in front of this microphone, you guys just, that, that's your element. That's what we do. And I mean, mm. remember I, I started doing this in the year of our Lord, <laughs> 1992. Really? I just my first radio program. So yes. So how's how's the media business changed, huh? Yes, a lot. One. But a remember now, different game. I, I was trying to explain to someone the other day, and my, you know, if I tell an Afrikaans, it'll be you'll understand it better. But mm. to me, um, when I was growing up, and I was in uh, 17, 18 years old, the, the Afrikaans programming and radio specifically, was extremely conservative. And mm. I remember doing my, my maths homework, and I was listening to a guy on, on the Afrikaans Dienst, 
And what they did, they brought in um, high school kids and then they would ask them, what would you like to hear? What music can we play for you? And this kid came in and he said, um, um, uh, you know, they all spoke a little bit. They almost used to sing to people. Yeah. And he said, but man, what will you hear? And he said, um, Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> must have scared that woman to death. Exactly. And death. the guy went, you know, he, he broke his composure. And he said, oh, I was going to eat it. Dave was a mistake. Yeah, and he was funny. Satan died. But he is Juanita Klaas in the ballon in the wind. And I'm like, you bastard. And in that moment, uh, I, I said to myself, one day, uh, I will get the opportunity to allow kids like that to ask what they want. And to speak their, you know, their truth. You know, you're truth. always so full of compliments for me, but I've got to tell you something. There are so many Afrikaans people my age and younger who you've made confident and proud of being who they are and allowed them to be who they are and, and taught them that being Afrikaans is not a, it's not a, 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 a burden. Yeah, to this thing. It's, it's just the way you, it's just how it's you were born. It's, it's just the family you, you were raised in. Yeah. And you don't have to conform to all that crap if you don't want to. So also, you never conform. No, 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 no. And uh, I think there's a, you know, the history of this country. I mean, now, now I'm going there, but it's we need to understand that uh, I think everyone suffered. You know, not to the same degree, but I think everyone suffered back in the day because there were books you cannot read, there were yeah. songs you cannot listen to, there yeah. were things you cannot say. Um, I mean, sometimes you had to put on a uniform and go to the border, you know, and kill yeah. people that you, uh, uh, you why? Didn't, you didn't even hate. No, no, no. To your point about how Bloom has changed, uh, Bloom reminds me of, okay, so I am from that side of the well, South, South Africa. Oh. So Bloom, the reason why Bloom worked, like to your point, I wanted to say this earlier. It was a melting pot. It yeah, was a melting pot. So you have Lesotho there. Mm -hmm. You have a bit of influence from the closer side. You have the Afrikaners. And everyone just knew that we had an end goal and we wanted to be happy. We wanted to succeed. Yeah. And we pushed that narrative. It wasn't about the color of your skin, about the what? The Urania and whatnot. But you're no also kid. I mean, also, I think you're you're exactly right, Bakabantu, but it's it's difficult for some people who are very political to see it that way. You, you've never been really political. I went. I mean, you to, have very strong opinions about no. things, but you don't get involved with politics no, no, and no, politicians. But, but I, I do love politics, and uh, you know, back in the day, especially when um, the seasons were changing in South Africa, that you know, from more or less ninety ninety mm. upwards, uh, I went to all the political rallies, all the political meetings, because I want to hear what these guys have to mm. say. And I remember when uh, Tokyo Sehwale mm. came to uh, our campus for the first time. Um, uh, remember, it was a big thing. It was very Afrikaans. And, uh, I think we had like two or three black students at the time. Yeah. Um, and Tokyo Sehwale came there and he, he decided, okay, he's going to speak at, at the Tux campus. And mm -hmm. I'll, I'll never forget his word. Very charming man, by the way, Tokyo yeah. Sehwale. And he, he came into um, this Musha Sal and he said uh, he had a black suit on. And he said, Huya uh, it was like, and he said, uh, <laughs> he said, I was my wife. Um, I, I was going to wear my cream suit today. He said, I, I love my cream suit, but I, my wife said, I must wear my black suit because they're probably going to throw me with something, with something at me. <laughs> so I don't want to stain my suit. So that's why I'm wearing my, my dark suit. Wow. And immediately he had, the, he had yeah. the crowd. My, I also went to the all the rechses, you know, the Avia beer, and uh, you know, I felt when when Eugene to Blanche and see, in spite of all the things that happened, that was a great show. <laughs> you know, it was like when the circus came to town. I could have us and uh, you met Eugene, you know, and it was in his stadtsaal from Pretoria. Oh yeah. And I remember. Were you um, looking around to make sure no one you knew saw you? Yeah, there? yeah. No one knew me. <laughs> well, that was. I remember I went for the entertainment and the, there was a band, oh, and a, yeah? a marching band. And I'm like, pains a heart and snore and berets. <laughs> yeah. I remember, and then they, they would always burn the flag. Yeah. Ironically enough, the old South African flag would then be burned. <laughs> it's weird, no? Yeah, that's funny. Just, oh, it's <clears throat> flag. People forget this stuff. And they would, 
and I remember I'm standing outside, and the guy goes, "Was going to be flag brand. Someone have a lighter." And no one had a light to a match, and they just started stepping on the flag. <laughs> trap them! Trap them! <laughs> It was the weirdest thing. It was the weirdest time. <laughs> and I got to meet all of these interesting characters. And I, I remember when I was on radio for the first time and, and we just had the new ministers. And I, I spoke to all of them. And I've never spoken to these ANC people. And these, yeah. you know, it, it, we never but by you access. speaking to them, they were the also, devil. But you also introduced them to an audience that otherwise would have also avoided them or never seen them. Yeah. yeah. And what was interesting to me, all of them demanded that I call them by their first name. Yeah. Now things have changed a lot. Mark. You must call him the honorable minister. Honorable minister. minister. Oh, you're in trouble. Like, you know, call me, so, yeah, call me Joe. <clears throat> so let's whoever. just talk about this quickly because this is in the news today. And a lot of people want to know what this is all about. Uh, the, 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 those Blue Light Brigade people yeah. who pulled those two guys out of the car and beat them up the other day, they've been um, sent to court. They yeah. appeared in court yesterday. They came up with some nonsense story about how this car had been speeding up behind them as suspicious and they were warned about mm. it. I mean, it just sounds like such a nonsense excuse, right? Yeah. This is now, this is the story everyone's talking about this morning. No, they're going to get away with it because they have the state backing and they have a good reason. No one can prove it. They say they were protecting Paul Mashatile and I, I don't think he wasn't even with them. Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. But we'll know, allegedly. We, know where the, we know where the deputy president uh, is. It was the, if I, he was there, then then he bears some responsibility uh, too because he, he, he could have got out of the car and said, uh-uh, guys, we don't do this. No, no, no. He, I think he was in the car and yeah. I think he sent them out Agreed. because uh, at some point, Paul Mashatilo was probably like, this car is slowing. Like, it's, I just want to rush to wherever he wanted to yeah. rush to because he has mansions worth $24 million. Mm -hmm. So he wants to rush to his new mansion. He's like, get this guy out of the road. And those guys were sent in and there were goons and they beat that guy up. So you think it's even worse if he wasn't? I, I think it, he was there. And if he wasn't there, those people, wherever, mm -hmm. there is no excuse, Gareth. Even if that car was speeding, even if it was rushing, these people are trained. They, you don't beat up someone like that. So my take on it, I think, I think he was there. I think he was there. I don't think he necessarily sent them out. I think it was, uh, th these guys are law unto themselves. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, yeah. they, uh, they're they high on power. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you, have you ever driven in a, in a blue light, a blue lights flashing uh, car? Oh, no, 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 you convoy. move your car, otherwise they'd run over you. But have you ever been in oh, a convoy oh, like that? Oh, no, You've no, been no. in it? No, I have been in a convoy like that, you oh. know, blue lights flashing and uh, it's a, it's a thing. You, it's a sense of power. I'm not going to lie to you. You feel like sure. you, on, you, you can do anything. The cars just get out of the way. It's just sirens and lights. And I think it's, it, they're high on power. Yeah. That's the thing. I think you're right. Simple as that. <clears throat> I think it's it's just disgusting, though. And I, I hope that, yeah, yeah. you know, because of work from the, the public who just said they're not tolerating this, these guys have been brought to book. Let's hope they actually get tried properly. But you know how many times this happens Salt. when it's not caught on camera? Yeah. Oh, it know. must happen all the it time. happens the whole time. Yeah, the whole time. And that's why we, we like, can't let them get do away. Do you remember the soldiers during COVID where they would just walk in and just destroy your entire house because you had booze? Not because you were drinking booze, but just because you had yeah. booze. They just walk in and they just break bottles and whatnot because they are a host of to themselves. They were the law. South Africans shouldn't tolerate this shit. They shouldn't. We, we go back to training. You know, none, um, well, almost none of these guys are properly trained. You know, there's a way in which you handle a situation. Oh. Um, if you see how the Americans handle it, it's completely different. There's a way in which you deal with the public. So most of the people are just not simply, they're simply not trained. Someone just said uh, his real name is Pupol Mashatina. <laughs> <laughs> But also, Rian, like word. just just a, uh, a side note about the training is that is that by design, because you it's easy to get thugs to do thuggery. But imagine if you train people and you gave them the knowledge in order to defuse a situation, then you get people who are hesitant to fight. You get people who who won't be beat up people at your command. Mm. Rian always used to have this saying. I think you finished your show with it. You'd say this X eight Swiss book knife where the police starts. Yeah, <laughs> You know, that, that saying came from somewhere, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it is. This is, I said, this is a droll in the Volcom bars that, <laughs> that come from Ivers off. I love it. Uh, Afrikaans can be such a beautiful descriptive language. Dude, I am getting the most nostalgia feeling. Like 18 years of my life, this was it. <laughs> yeah, boy, yeah. This was boy. it. I knew the periodic table in Afrikaans before I ever boy. knew it in English. There we go. That's the way to go. Yeah. So... Uh, 
so the things that you've often been in trouble for, and there's a story in the news today which will uh, will bring this back to you. I hope not to make you unhappy. But Stellenbosch University has called for an urgent transformation again mm. regarding their community, the deaf community, of course, here, citing a need for more inclusion into academic spaces. Mm. So now the president, of course, has announced sign language is our official twelfth language because we don't have enough. We don't have enough official language. How many people know Tonga? Not like just as a like yeah. so, no very few very few so very few. why are we adding more languages I mean uh, I, I wish I knew I wish I could answer that question but I don't think there's an answer for it because we've got so many now the problem with an official language or declaring something an official language is that you then have to print everything in the government gazette in all yeah, twelve the, yeah including yeah. I think it's probably in Braille already so now it'll be in Braille and now you've got to what have someone doing sign language and, and then we start implementing it in the schools we start having like basic education have a silent a sign language teacher no. that is all well and good but remember the last time we put someone who knew sign language on a public stage on an yeah. international stage we, we got the guy who was doing the things that and he was making it up. remember <laughs> totally making it up you've seen and, and this, this is the problem some of the languages people don't speak very well so we know well, most of the people in this country don't speak most of the language very well. But imagine how you could sign language. Yeah, I'm going to screw uh, it up. People are going to guess their way through. Yeah. You know, I'm just going to, I'm trying to communicate with you, but I'm, I'm going to guess what my next hand gesture will be. It'll be more offensive than anything else. Exactly. I think it'll upset more. And there's also like very various sign languages. It's like there's American sign and then there's yeah. English sign and there's a the UK sign. I didn't know that. So it's not universal? It's, it's not universal. It's not a universal language. All I ever want to know from a language is the rude words. Straight up. Go, go. Also, again. You must first find out what, how you say all the dirty words yeah. in every one of the languages that you learn, and then you know you, you've actually... Yeah, we all, we all knew Mayo Masa yeah. before we even knew what Afrikaans was. <laughs> you know, you know I, uh, the Greeks I used to work for in the cafe. Many, many years I worked for the Greeks. And uh, they taught me all the, the bad words, you know. Skadala <laughs> fast. You know, it's Skadala Fas. Pizavingi. Ramur. It's eat shit. Skadala Fas. Pasto Diablo. Go to the devil. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> and the Greek and his son used to scream at one another. But that, those were also the kinds of uh, Greek shop owners. I don't know if we still have as many of them today. As, as no, we no, 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 we don't still have those old cafe owners who used to scream like, at those you. Are like, the guys you want who, order now? And they would never... If you if you wasted time at the till yeah. or whatever, they'd get very annoyed with you and they'd shout at you. And people would order cigarettes, but they'd want a lostro, you know, like a yeah, one yeah, one yeah, cigarette. Yeah. And then they'd pay them their change in chappies. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, chappies. no, no, no. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> to interrupt you, so sorry, but uh, Kipros Theophanos, he was the owner of the Kipros. cafe. So he go to Cyprus for a holiday. So his friend Peter. He said to him, Peter, can you take uh, care of the cafe while I'm not here? Huh. Because someone needs to keep an eye. So he said, no problem. But he was also the, the camel rep. <laughs> he used to sell the camel cigarettes. And the... Okay. So Peter, big Greek, big mustache. You know. So anyway, so I th this was my first prank call, Bilma. Oh, really? So I'm in the, I'm in the video shop <laughs> section. I run the video shop. So we got the counter for the videos this side and the main counter, the cigarettes and everything on the other side. And the, in between us, the tools. So I thought, no, this guy, I'm going to prank him. You know? <laughs> or Peter. So uh, remember now, Kipros is in, uh, in uh, Cyprus. So I'm under the counter. I phone that side. <laughs> Hello, a water park supermarket. I say... Um, uh, hi, uh, I was just there and I got the cheese buns and I bought some Coke and a bar one. <laughs> yeah, I say you, you completely overcharged me. Why you mean uh, we overcharge you? I say, uh, uh, go work out the numbers. You charge, well, back in the day, it was like, let's say it came to 15 Rand. I yeah. said, you charge me 30 Rand. Yeah. No, you charge me 30 Rand. He goes, I don't charge you. It wasn't me. I say, um, I, I, it was you. I, you were standing behind the main counter. Big Greek with mustache. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, you the guy that helped me. Uh, I say, you know what? I'm going to report you. What's your name? He goes, eh, my name is Kipros. <laughs> Son of a bitch.
Oh, that's no, so no, great. no, no. I, I just had another moment where I just realized <laughs> this is our version of Larry David. Yes. <laughs> There's an episode where Larry David did this. <laughs> and Riyad, your life is Larry David he's in still, Afrikaans. He's, he's uh, <laughs> laughing. Listen, somebody Man. said, someone mentioned a show called Skewed. Well, yeah, I haven't heard yeah. about that in years, but I remember you did that as well, yeah. didn't you? You know, uh, yeah, Skier, Skier was the most controversial show. That it's a magazine too. type show. Yeah, we went with, uh, it was Fuerblatt, which was my yes. first TV show. We had all sorts of eccentric people on. And uh, for instance, a guy who thought it was a vampire. <laughs> 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 lovely, lovely guests. We had a lesbian wedding, which was a very big nice. thing. It was a big thing in those day. days, yeah. So we really pushed the boundaries. And um, SABC had to bring in extra people to work in the call center because of all the complaints. <laughs> so the show was not renewed, but it was it was very, very cool. It was controversial. Very. And you've never worried about pissing people off. Um, but you don't, you don't yeah. seek to piss them off. But if they get pissed off, it's not your fault. Near that, Peter man. Okay, just like I'm beyond it. My, I go for your native history, tell it obscure. So uh, now and then we 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 thought we had to go deep as well. You know, you can't just have vampires and lesbians. You know, sometimes you need to <laughs> need to cover deep. others other yeah. subjects. So we had uh, we had, we were talking about suicide. We thought let's it's a deep subject. Let's talk about it. So we had people that survived suicide. Hmm. So we had, uh, in other words, people who couldn't do it properly. Yeah, you see, you know, no, the, the eerste O, um, I said to him, listen, uh, so he shot himself through the head and survived it. And he survived. Yeah. But now I was a young broadcaster. I just started out. And um, I said, uh, he, he tells me the story. And I say, for him, uh, so when you pulled the, stri- the, the trigger, what was the first thing that went through your mind? And he looked at me and he said, it was a bullet. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, you can't make TV like so that. I'm like, it just has to happen. Oh crap! I'm screwing this up. <laughs> so the next, the next guy, he jumped from the Van Stadens River Bridge, yeah. and he fell into a tree. So is he? <laughs> so the tree caught him. He's the only guy that survived this jump. No, I said that all, man. I said, yeah, man, my throat, my gelos. To follow up my work, and then we lost the house. And I thought, no, I'm gonna jump. And um, so he jumps into the tree. Now, no, yeah, now he, he can't move, he's in the tree. So I said, Now, what did you do then? Because obviously, now you have to wait for the paramedics, you know, to come and come and get you. And he said, uh, I, I took out a cigarette <laughs> <laughs> and I lit it to serve myself. <laughs> <laughs> Add that to the list. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was difficult back in the day. You don't know how uh, to respond to these people. <laughs> yeah. No wonder they fired me. You know what? Uh, you know what? Rian's uh, bed music, his background music used to be when we were doing campus radio. It was that Janet Jackson? Yeah. That's, that's the, the way, way love goes. Mm-hmm. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Whenever I hear that music now, I also think of you. And of course, Janet's tit that fell out. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, Super Bowl. Yeah. I liked it. It, it fell out. Wait, well, no, didn't Justin Timberlake rip it out? <laughs> it fell out, ripped out. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? I was I was in love of only two women in my life. It was Janet Jackson and Dolly Parton. That's a but, hell of a combo. But but but, but Dolly, but Dolly and her dollies were were the one. I'm still in love with Dolly and her dollies. Everybody loves Dolly. Come yeah. on, what's oh, not man. to love? Oh, Dolly is a rock star. So, so I heard something interesting about Dolly the other day. I don't know if it's true, but apparently Dolly Parton, when she goes out in in Nashville or wherever mm. she lives, she doesn't look anything like she looks on stage. She takes off all the makeup. She's got dark hair. Mm. Um, she's got sort of shoulder length brown or or, or kind mm. of black hair and people don't recognize her and she mm. lives almost this double life where when she's with her husband and she's been married to her whole life uh she's a very very happy uh, very successful marriage she's got she's a mom all kinds of things but when she's on stage she's dolly yeah. and she always used to famously say it costs a lot to look this cheap no you see <laughs> you know the campbells two singers they here the in South brothers. Africa, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, very famous Afrikaans, like pop group by these two brothers. But they wear cowboy hats, mm. white cowboy hats. 
And the guy said to me, um, if they take off the hats, no one recognizes them. <laughs> 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 Oof. At all. So if they're at a festival, you know, people keep on running up to them for autographs and pictures. Somebody could take off their hats, they don't know who we are. <laughs> what a funny story about Dolly. I think she once came third in a in a lookalike contest, a Dolly Parton lookalike contest. Oh, she yeah. once came third. She dolled herself up, proper Dolly Parton, yeah. actual makeup, and then she, so she lost. She came third. Well, there's, there's famously that story about Elvis as well, yeah. where he, he went to the, the pharmacy, the, the drugstore. Yeah. I went on the drugstore and asked, uh, uh, and you mind if you give me a, a couple of tramazettes? <laughs> <laughs> the guy behind the counter said, sure. And then on his way out of the, the pharmacy, he saw a flyer on the door. It said, Elvis impersonating, uh, impersonator contest. Yeah. And um, so Elvis also went home, dressed up the night of the, of the contest, went to the show, and he came third. <laughs> and what? He said he was he loved telling people the story that he came third in an Elvis impersonator competition. Maar Beerman, jij is op een level waar um, he's very famous. So, you know, people immediately Who, recognize me? him. Yeah, he is. Nonsense. We don't even Ma- have famous people in this country. Yeah, we do. Um also, also I think we've got 10 celebrities, but we have we have a lot of famous oh, okay, people. Okay, all right. Then I'm uh, Mano. Uh, in my mm-hmm. case, people, uh, you know, most mostly Afrikaans people know me. Ma, oh, that sounded very arrogant. But it, it's mostly. <laughs> they do, though. It's yeah, mostly so Afrikaans people. Ma, um, I always get to that people are not sure if they recognize me from somewhere. Like, like I get uh, that. Yeah. Like, and they, they're, not, they're not trying to be an asshole. They, no. they, they, you look familiar, and then they always ask you something about, weren't you at that braai two Sundays ago? <laughs> oh, yeah. And you go, no. Because yeah. he does look like that one. And they say, didn't you sell me a car? <laughs> yeah. So I, I like, I go with it. I'm like, but the other day I, I tried that. It, it backfired for you once. What, what, what happened? Spectacularly. What happened? So I guess, um, I'm at the restaurant and uh, I'm actually, I just parked and I'm on my way uh, to the restaurant. And a, a guy walks up to me. Court Okiman. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, 1.34 you know our favorite kind of people <laughs> short people we like him so this guy he walks up to me um, and he goes Kenyo and I'm going yes you can me he goes from far he said we were in Warsaw Dalmas together <laughs> don't you remember me? he goes here that's good to meet you to man who can it I say Nee, dit gaan nog goed, man. Uh, <laughs> hoe gaan dit met jou? Hij zegt, nee, wat is jouw naam nou weer? Ek sê, um, ek is Frederik. <laughs> ja, man, Frederik. <laughs> He's totally your tin. Want even my kort Dirk. Ek sê, ja, ek moet ook vir jou kort Dirk. Kort Dirk. Kort Dirk. En hy goes, ek sê, hy sê, nee, jyre, Frederik, het gaan nie goed nie, man. Ek sê, wat is gebeur? Nee, maar ek het my werk verloor. Ja, <laughs> My vrou is weg, my bierman. Dit, dit, dit gaan nie goed nie. So I'm like, ek sê, jammer om te hoor, man, Dirk. Now I'm in this conversation that I <laughs> and you want to get supposed out. to be yeah, in. You want to get out. Hy goes, onthou jy vir jy vrou skoem, man. I'm like, <laughs> ja. Vy sê, ek moes, hy uh, sê, geskiedenis gegeen. Ek sê, ja, 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 geskiedenis, ja. Jy sê, jy moes toe dood nou die dag. Ek sê, ja, I'm so excited. What? <laughs> See that? It's too late to turn back. <laughs> You're already into the soup. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> they keep going uh, forward. It's too late now. So he goes, yeah, man. <laughs> this is a, a challenge. I can't even glow in what you know for my scene. I say, yeah, so I'm on. Look, it's going slow. Look, we're going to the economy and the land. He say, "Wait, you are going to know with me." I say, "Yeah, we're going to know with you, Dirk." I say, "Man, I'm playing my car." Shit. I say, "Man, gelukkig is daar my vrienden." Hulle kyk na my, so nou en dan. So sy oot my nou die dag in een gasthuis ingeboek. En ek is lovely. Jy is nie het my vriend. Jy weet hoe jy jy vriend was. <laughs> oh shit, okay. So I'm at the ATM. Oh, <laughs> so I draw money. Ek geef vir my. Ek sê, vir, vir die ouda. You know. <laughs> vir die ouda. <laughs> vir die ouda. A man you've Hiso, never met before and you're now yeah. giving him money. Hierso is op my. Gaan boek jyself in my gasthuis, man. Ook daar. Yeah, for the old eyes. Oh, for the Oh, friend. And he gives me this hug and he says, Yeah, I can't thank you so much. But yes, 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 you're the best of men. So what I can't look in. 
and your mahala was next to nice. I'm like, yeah, thanks, man. Oh, Jesus, that's hilarious. So anyway, so I walk <laughs> off, and he's, yeah, he's got tears in his eyes. Yeah, Delmas was Mutsanstan. Prachtig die volgende dag. He's still waiting in the. He's in the parking lot again. Oh no. Friedrich. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I need to be somewhere. Sorry, Dirk. Good luck. Oh uh, man, you see, that's where you, there's no good deed goes unpunished. No man, yes. I love, I love that he, he called himself Kort Dirk. Because Kort Dirk, Dirk. Yeah. there's some funny. I, I I remember the old rugby players, like back in the '60s and '50s. They were like even now, they they they're funny. They've got these names, mm. and in small towns in South Africa, everybody has a a funny name. Like mm. you know, yes, Long Pit, or mm. you are, or you Dwevedani, yeah. or whatever. Mm. Or Glinda. Blinda Kuss. Yeah. There's always a, some kind of my, there's, a, there's a descriptor uh, ahead of their name. Yeah. My my favorite was Mof Maybar. <laughs> <laughs> that not, could not have meant the same uh, back uh, in the day. Yeah, Mof Maybar is Maybar. not a good. A, a Draadkar de Lange mm. is another good one. <laughs> I don't. Know, I mean, how do you get that name? Fafa. Swoke a you. Fafa. Fafa. No, you, I don't know how you get these names, I but I remember, okay. I remember them in like what? I remember them in rugby teams. They yeah. used to they used to come up in our rugby team where you just became this guy and then you right. were just this Here, guy. I've got a, a, a list of really cuck Afrikaans names. <laughs> Whenever I see them on TV or on an estate agent's board or whatever, I write them. I just choose. Krefio in of Dwevenai. Elzan. Elzan. Um, Elizna. Elizna. There's a good one. They almost get oh, worse yeah. toward the bottom. Trunel. <laughs> Trunel. Do you like Trunel? I love Trunel. Trunel, right. I love. Then I found one the other day. Uh, Renonkel. <laughs> what? Na- named after the flower? Oh, yeah. A, a, a renunkel, I, I suppose. Yeah, Renonkel. Uh, Juhandre, but with a Z at the yeah. end. You Andres. Yeah, but they also no. did this thing where they took like your dad's name and they made it no, they, feminine. They smashed them together. Yeah, they smashed your mom and your dad's yes. name, and it sounds like. But what did your mom pass in arms? Well, um, glad you asked. Name? My my father's name was a weird name. Esli. Esli. Esli, and my mother Rona. So you would have been Ezro. Ezro. <laughs> If they'd done but, that to you. But he, um, <laughs> apparently the name comes somewhere from the Old Testament. Isley. It used to be Hesley. Uh, some story, uh, uh, they were carrying the tabernacle. Was it? No, no it wasn't the tabernacle. Must, <laughs> the, the ark. Must have, the ark must have been strong to carry the tabernacle. Was the ark. Yeah. And remember the, um, you know, Gareth, they you know your Bible. They marched around the walls of Jericho. And uh, no, uh, the uh, they were, it was coming from somewhere and they were taking it somewhere okay. but the one the, the oxes stumbled or something and the mm. one guy put his hand on the ark and mm. he was he, he was immediately, immediately struck down yeah, dead yeah my one of the other guys that probably just smirked and said we told you <laughs> was hesley <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, that's a hell of a guy to be named told after. You. Your, your grandparents must have really loved him to have given him so, the, so they, they saw all the moseses and all the, the aquabuses and they're like yeah, no, no, that guy who survived. But, but did your did your dad live long enough to see your success? He um, he saw me on the Felicia Mabuza Subtle show, oh, and and he he taped that and he said, "Look, my son is on the Felicia Mabuza Subtle show." Oh, that was that yeah. was that was a big deal. Yeah, I was I was in the audience, and um, she was on my show at some point, and doesn't remember me at all. By no. the way. I thought you would because we had many a late night conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I thought she would remember me. She didn't, but uh, she but was he, on the show. And but he never got to see no. all the TV shows of your own, your own radio shows. No, I never got to see any of it. I was I was on Isidingo as hmm. uh, I delivered a tent, um, and he he <laughs> saw that he also taped that, but he, he never he never experienced the radio part of it. No, wow. Yeah. I'm sure he'd be very impressed by what you're doing now. But, um, yeah, literally that same year when I just got my first big break on, um, you know, as the presenter of Fuerblatt, which was the year mm. 2000, that was the same year he passed away. Oh. So he passed away around, around about June, July. I got the gig in October of that year. What was the worst thing that's happened to you in your media career? And it can be funny or, or, or really sad. I, I'm just trying to think of like, Th- all the all the trials and tribulations and the 
controversies and all of that stuff. What was the worst one for you? I think um, to me it was uh, it was the whole Tux FM thing. And and what happened was I, uh, I mean Gareth will tell you um, they, it was a very special organization. You know we did a lot of we all very worked good for things. free. Yeah, it was for free, and we really appreciated this yeah. medium because mm. we we understood what it's like to be able to talk to people, and someone actually listens to you. But um, when I went back and it took me four years, and you know it wasn't much left of Tux FM when I took over. And it took a lot of hard work. I mean, there was, Rebuild it. yeah, there were nights when, and I, you know, I, t- I tell the story for the simple reason that you understand how, how much we had to, to put into this, but there were times that I was so tired that I, I could, could literally not get out of my car and walk up the stairs to my flat. It was just, I didn't have the energy. I didn't have the strength. But eventually we turned it around and, um, you know, we had a nice little surplus and it was going well. And because the station became more independent, there was more jealousy. You, as you see now with Stellenbosch, how it works, you mm-hmm. know, in a, mm-hmm. in a microcosm like that, um, in a system like that. Yeah. And they felt that I can't be, I can't have more independence. You know, I need to belong to the brotherhood, to the university. And there, were lo- there was a lot of jealousy. And they thought, how can they get rid of me? Yeah, and um, I th- I had this. I invested some of the the the, the radio stations' money into a nightclub, okay, okay. Uh, which I thought was a good idea and was a good idea. Yeah. Odds was very successful, but they uh, they then decided that I'm corrupt, and oh. they actually send in a journalist and they <clears throat> publish the story that I'm corrupt, and that's the that's the very last thing you did should you say take, about did me. Did you take them on? I did. So um, what happened was this journalist and she wrote this. The scathingly, uh, it it was extremely um, uh, offensive to me. It was that uh, me corrupt? Hmm. But anyway, so I went on the air that morning, and I I knew where she she worked at the built offices there in um, in Arcadia, <laughs> and I said to my listeners, "This is what her car looks like. <laughs> uh, please go and take a shit on her bonnet." <laughs> So someone actually did that. Someone took a crap on her bonnet. <laughs> a human turd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then An oof, amber turd. <laughs> everything went to shit. And they decided they're gonna have to suspend me now. And actually it got worse. And they frog marched me off campus by the Hurat Oduk Sekritaitsbach. Wow. It made ah on my car to sleep. And I think that moment when I when I drove away and I, I saw Tux FM in the rearview mirror and I thought and I knew that was gonna be my last time. That was the worst. Yeah. Jeez. Well, I mean, listen. Hello. Get through some things. Here's Yaku. Hello, uh, Yaku Voigt is here. Yaku, of course, is the host of uh, one of our shows here on cliffcentral.com. I actually had a nice lunch with him just the other day. Khanet, um, are you good? I'm actually having the most um, uncanny day because last week when we had lunch, we spoke about Rian and we spoke ah. about Pete Leroux yes. from Soccer So yeah. as I was driving here, Pete Leroux is on, on 702 and I walk in and here's Rian. So it's bizarre. Mm. <laughs> Why did you also speak about oh, sorry? Court? I meant, um, you look familiar, didn't we go to school together? <laughs> oh, I wanted to ask you, didn't we talk about court? Dirk? Delmas, <laughs> <Same Dalmas. laughs> like, don't you remember Rian from Delmas? Oh, Frederick, that's yeah, man, Yaku from Delmas. Yeah, of course. Listen, Yaku's actually got a hell of a story. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's he's got an interesting life. So, the first time I'm, I met Yaku, we also went for a lunch and had a, a chat about how. You, you, your dad is still in, in what, wilderness or something? Uh, yeah, Mosulbay. Yeah. Mosulbay, yeah. yeah. And he was telling me about how, in fact, at the lunch just the other day, how he once drove a bus because he was in Bloemfontein. <laughs> and he decided, I need to earn some money. And he drove a bus with a bunch of Odronkhat rugby players. But that was seniors. From Ruval. Was it seniors rugby? What was it? Yeah, golden oldies rugby. Golden yeah. oldies oh. rugby. Oh, uh, we were talking about uh, <laughs> Chip and Strip the other day. Yeah, yeah, yes, and then I said, I'm sure story. I've seen that place. Where was, is it in Strip, Bruce? Strips and Chips. Yeah, man. Bruce. Esselen. Bruce. Oh. Esselen. Is, Bruce. is Bruce still there or have they renamed it? Because that was that, a great name for a street. It's still there. Duke, Duke van Bruce and Priel. <laughs> <laughs> so how's it going, Yaku? You good? But uh, yeah, we were. Yeah, it was. Uh, we actually. Uh, Gareth was telling about this this chip and strip, and then I said to him, "Listen, if you if I tell you my story, I I, I drive a bus for Freistad Ture, yeah, yeah, with um, yeah. Andries. Oh yeah, and in um and in my first Freistad Ture, can you imagine? But it it was a uh, anyway. They came from Ruval. They were 
coming for a weekend to play golden old rugby. And the first evening, so it was my first trip. I, I I was newly qualified. I got my my code fourteen driver's license the day before, and they said, "Okay, you you're good to go." Mm. And uh, we came to Pretoria, and then um, we uh, uh, we went out for the evening in a bus park there close to Stadler, just uh, that road up. So I'm sitting now, and they said, "Okay, wait." I was the the last bunch. They said, "Okay, you can come with us." So we went literally down the street there, and it was a, a strip club. Mm. With, a horrible uh, one. A with, horrible one. <laughs> with wait, yeah, the 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 waitresses there, uh, they were on the sunset. At, at, I think there's no job after that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I was like, I'm way too sober for what's happening right now. It was it was very very wild. Well, I didn't even tell you the story. So it was so wild. We left uh, the police college. This is now into the weekend. Yeah. And then one of the guys was standing next to me and I had to break. The guy fell through the window. <laughs> the window was yes. on the... So we drove back to Bloemfontein without the front window on, on that <laughs> side. It was, yeah. it was insane. No, that was... Look, Bloom is wild. It was very, very wild. And, and you would think old men who... I mean, playing rugby is hard enough for young men. But for old men, it must have been a hell of a thing. No wonder they got so pissed. I, I think they got let the out once a year, and then they just uh, – the, it was literally from Thursday morning until about Sunday midday. It was just – they were just they drinking, drinking all day. A oh. brand of vein and coke. Yeah. Had you ever the Translux bus gerai? Have you traveled by bus? It was not for us. When we were at Varsity, we booked a trip to – there were like five or six of us, um, and we – all varsity friends you oh. knew some of these people and we went up to uh lake kariba because one of the girls had a family house there mm. and we took the bus there and i i swore at that point i would never ever take a bus again it was to lake most, kariba how long did that take it took a long time and we thought well we were, we were poor students what were we going to do but i swore to myself i would never ever use a bus again and i i won't i'm allergic to them now why uh, you the, must have some horrible experience Makabantu, did you ever take the Translux? I, I took an intercape bus. There were what, cockroaches everywhere, and mm. it is terrible. I, f- throughout my varsity career, traveling from Vitz to the Eastern Cape, eight hours to 12 yeah, hours, yeah. they were always delayed. I, I can sympathize. The problem was my, my parents, um, to go and visit them in Durban, you had to, that's the only way I could get there. It was the cheapest way, right. was with the Translux. Yeah. And... Um, I would so connect, Pnees, and we're Afrikaans. So connect. At some point, you want to go to the Louvre, but it's embarrassing because you're in row four. And I'm like, well, Ollie means uh, they know where you're going. (laughs) And they know when you're coming back. Yeah, they know. So, no, I remember this one particular evening on the way to Durban, um, (laughs) just outside of Peter Maritzburg, to give you more information, more detail. And I was, uh, I thought, tonight I'm going to wait till everyone's asleep. Then I'm gonna go. But then they get the swak blast. And um, so everyone was you know how people sleep on a bus, it's legs in the all over the, the place and the yeah. and whatever. So I climbed all over very carefully for over all of these people. Next any toilet. And there's remember that it, it, there's the last row in the bus. So I see uh, if you get in the toilet, people have a wonderful view to yeah. the right is the door of the toilet. <laughs> and we hit a, a bump somewhere. <laughs> And that is best from the cock. <laughs> and the door opens. <laughs> and the door swings open. <laughs> and obviously, people wake up from the bump. Now this whole row <laughs> is looking at me. <laughs> and I can't even... I can't even... I can't do. Can you please close the door? <laughs> One of you. And it was my help. That was rough. That's horrible. Horrendous. So it was a door too far. Was he, 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 You've interviewed some very cool people in the last couple of weeks. Uh, give us a, a precy of what sort of subjects you've covered so people can listen if they missed it and listen out for what's coming up. 
Um, so, yeah, so our focus uh, in the past couple of weeks, we spoke about um, audio visual, you know, uh, we, sp you know, I spoke about this uh, many times where, um, you know, during this lockdowns and everybody was just let loose on Microsoft Teams, for example, and Zoom and, and, Zoom and, and, you know, and it's the fatigue is of such a nature now that people don't even bother to put on the cameras anymore. Yeah. Just, I was in a meeting um, last Thursday and I was the only one whose camera was on. I felt like maybe I should have switched mine off as well. It's it's habit it's yeah. habit now because people, um, you don't want to you, you should actually switch on your camera, but people don't want to see to show you that they're yeah, not paying attention. I, so I met your guest the other day, and he said they set up these amazing boardroom things where you can have someone on the screen, and it feels like they're in the room rather yes. than they're on Zoom. Yeah. 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 So there's yeah. a lot of focus in the sort of in the business area now where people are. are using up those uh, boardrooms and stuff like that mm -hmm. and enhancing the experience. And then, and then going forward, what we're focusing on now, um, it's such an obvious thing, but it's, it, it happens a lot um, where if you take probably about 80% of I, human IT support is related to either software patches that's not being up to, up to date or people being allowed to install stuff on their PCs. So, so when you talk about, software not being updated i mean it's not like your phone if you have if you have no one's going to tell you you need to go and upgrade you know my phone says to me it's time to update your system otherwise i wouldn't know what to do exactly that but uh, and uh, i can go on about this all day but uh, i see it at my office you know like people will so i'm a little bit ocd as far as that's mm. concerned but people will i'll sit next to them and and let's say we're doing a quote or something and i go like do you see all of those Roy Enik is there. It's time to, it's telling you you must upgrade something. They go, oh, it's, it doesn't. But it, even with phones, I know I know some people who just never update their phone. And and, never... and that's where probably the bulk of security issues come yeah. in an organization yeah. because everybody doesn't do that. Um, and so, they wonder and, like eight months after the last upgrade why they can't uh, receive the file I'm sending them or something. Or even, or even uh, reboot a PC. You know, yeah, like the thing right. becomes so slow. You go like a... Um, we, mm. If it's Windows, we know how to fix that. You just yeah. reboot it. When last you do it? I know, like three months ago. Um, so we we're focusing a lot on that in terms of offering what you call patch management. So it's basically software where you then think on behalf of the person the client, driving yeah. the computer, and you make sure that all of the patches are up to date, and that you reboot the, the uh, computer on a regular basis, and 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 uh, most importantly prevent people from installing stuff on that uh, work notebook or, or PC that you don't want him to do. Malware. So we Malware. actually, yeah, we actually can, um, you know, sometimes we can actually, if, what happened to your voice, by the way, my, <laughs> were you out in the cold this weekend? Uh, yes. You were, what were you doing this triathlon stuff? Yeah. Well, this mul uh, this mulch guy, I mean, those, hmm? he's very, he and his wife both do these triathlons and so oh, it's just trail running. You know, it's, well, I don't know. It sounds like a lot of work. See, and this is why you sound the way it you do. It is a lot today. of work. Yeah. <laughs> There's a price to pay. Yeah. No, for sure. All right. So that's coming up on Unbundled with Yaku a little bit later on today. But how nice to have you here, Birma. Thank well, you for coming you. in. Some and, like uh, I hope that this has uh, chased away any of those bizarre dreams that you have of doing morning shows again. Uh, it, it brought back so many great memories thank you Bill. no it's a pleasure it's so nice to have you here nice to meet you yeah, everybody's saying you should do a podcast because they love your voice so yeah people no, no 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 he's got a smooth voice yes uh, of a god's manure womb he's there we got go. that going for him yeah whatever happened to you adopting me and buying me a car uh you just disappeared i thought you died or something adopting because adopting and buying you a car yeah he wants so remember when i was having car troubles and my car was like being impounded and all this stuff but right? that's just an old office and yeah, then he just this disappeared the, i thought he died the so, old office yeah. and then yaku's like I'll, I'll, moved I'll, I'll adopt you and i'll well I'll that's, buy not you gonna, a that's not gonna happen anymore because you just disappeared <laughs> yeah um tracy says by the way we were talking about these um these names that people give their children and the, and the nicknames that come with them a small town in the Karoo has a TV repair guy called Pete Satellite. <laughs> Pete Satellite. <laughs> and the That's fish nice. and chips guy is called Chris Fiss, and the barber is called Jan Hara. That's lovely. <laughs> Jan Hara. Jan Hara. It's called, yes. great. It's called synergy. <laughs> this is I, real community. I shouldn't say too much, but we had a woman in George who was called Peter Bokis. So <laughs> I don't know why. Pretty many normal. Peter Bokis. Very nice, everybody. Have an awesome Tuesday. We'll end on that. Rian van Heerden, Jakub Voigt.
Bhagavantu and I. We will see you tomorrow at 6 